Our mission is to transcend the norms and achieve excellence with all our glass products and solutions. Our entire manufacturing process is streamlined, calibrated and perfected to the highest standards of quality. AIS Clear is a high quality clear glass that is characterized by high precision flatness and uniform thickness, ensuring perfect clarity of vision and a brilliant luster. It is available in variety of thicknesses and sizes. AIS tinted heat absorbing glass absorbs 30 to 45 percent of the sun's heat, enabling greater comfort and enhanced aesthetics. It is available in a variety of colors, sizes and thicknesses. AIS Crystal is India's only branded frosted glass. It obscures the view while allowing light to pass through, making it ideal for privacy and aesthetic appeal. AIS Opal is India's leading energy efficient and heat reflective glass brand. It is available in a range of vibrant colors. AIS Opal's solar control properties make it the best choice for exterior glass and also for various aesthetic applications. Long lasting and economical, AIS Opal makes exteriors stylish and the interiors cool. AIS Opal Trends is a first of its kind and India's only patterned heat reflective glass glazing brand and is available in many contemporary patterns to make buildings look modern and stylish. Both AIS Opal and AIS Opal Trends are available in a wide range of stylish and exciting colors. So whatever your design or need, you are sure to find a color that fits your requirements. AIS Sunshield is a high-performance solar-controlled glass solution that provides the ultimate in cooling comfort. It is available in five magnificent shades, including our latest addition, Sunshield Royal Gold, the gold standard in heat-reflective glass. AIS Sunshield Trends, a regal trend in heat-reflective glass brings together the functional superiority of AIS heat reflective glass and the refreshing new aesthetics of patterned glass. It is available in a range of vibrant colors and exciting patterns. AIS EcoSense, the green standard in glass. The AIS EcoSense range of products provide the right blend of aesthetics and energy efficiency, daylight and energy saving, visual comfort and thermal control, technology and eco-sensitivity. AIS EcoSense is available in five different ranges Enhance, Exceed, Edge, Essence and Excel and all of them are available in a variety of shades. AIS Decor, a fresh and innovative glass product created especially for use in interiors. It is an environment friendly solution that's easy to maintain and use. Available in a variety of vibrant shades. Get a better look at life with Thank you for joining. While most of you all have connected, we still have a few people who are connecting. So let's wait for a couple of minutes for everyone to join. Until then, I would request you all to settle down and be comfortable. We shall begin the event soon. Thank you.
Our mission is to transcend the norms and achieve excellence with all our glass products and solutions. Our entire manufacturing process is streamlined, calibrated and perfected to the highest standards of quality. AIS Clear is a high quality clear glass that is characterized by high precision flatness and uniform thickness, ensuring perfect clarity of vision and a brilliant luster. It is available in variety of thicknesses and sizes. AIS tinted heat absorbing glass absorbs 30 to 45 percent of the sun's heat, enabling greater comfort and enhanced aesthetics. It is available in a variety of colors, sizes and thicknesses. AIS Crystal
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ravina Parker, and I welcome you all here on behalf of AIS. It is a great pleasure to have you all with us today at the grand finale of ADO 2122. This has been a fantastic journey with students from colleges across India joining in, and the best talents competing with each other to reach the finale. We are excited for the finalist presentations and can't wait to see who wins this year. I welcome our honourable chief chief guest, Mr. V. Suresh. Chairman IGBC, our keynote speaker for the day, Mr. Jatin Shah, MD Colliers, and our national jury members, architect Vivek Bhole, who is also the curator of ADO and principal architect at Neo Modern Architects, architect Sonali Bhagwati, president DPA, architect Paul Moses, director at RSP Architects, Mr. Mahesh Arumugam, director at Main Heart Facade Consultancy, architect Karl Vadia, senior architect at Hafiz Contractor, architect. Uh, Raghuram, principal architect at CRN Trilog Studios. A warm welcome to all the principal and faculty members of all the colleges who are present with us today. We are also joined by our top management uh, personnel at AIS. We are happy to have you with us today. And I would now like to welcome our CMO and COO, Architectural Institutional Business, Mr. Vikram Khanna, to say a few words to begin today's event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rabina. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, on behalf of AIS, I welcome you all to the grand finale of the third AIS Design Olympiad. So as you all know, the ADO platform, this is in its third year. Uh, we started 2019. Uh, we started only with glass. This year, we've introduced uh, fenestration into, into the design contest. I think the ADO platform, um, as far as we are concerned, it gives... Uh, 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 you know, gives the architectural students uh, um, uh, the platform to really use their capability, uh, creativity, and their training and apply it to a project which has been uh, curated for them. Uh, it gives them a great opportunity to interact with practicing architects uh, and uh, experts from the industry. This year, uh, the jury members, both at the regional level and at the national level, have conducted, along with AIS people, uh, eight masterclass sessions uh, you know, for the students, which I think uh, goes a long way in their developing their understanding about glass and fenestration. Uh, I, I, I hope that you know, they have gained from that. Um, this year was also the first year, like I said, uh, where we've introduced the, um, the regional rounds. So the last two editions, we didn't have a regional round. This time we've had a regional round and it's uh, been very successful. We had four different jury panels, uh, one for each region. Um, this, uh, this has also uh, allowed for a lot more of engagement with the students a lot more time has been spent. Uh, I would like to uh, go on record to thank our jury members to have spent their uh, valuable time uh, with the students. I'm sure the students have benefited uh, from that uh, feedback that they've got while in the process of doing the project and at the same time, the guidance that they have received. Uh, finally, coming down to you know, the topic, the two topics that we had for the design contest this year, uh, which was uh, design adaptable and sustainable architecture for tomorrow. And the students had an option to use uh, uh, or to go with one of the two options. One was to design for better work spaces. I think uh, given the context, uh, the context, uh, context in which we are today uh, you know, with the pandemic, uh, almost two years uh, and running. Um, this this assumes uh, you know th this has a lot of importance. Uh, uh, we've seen this whole model uh, of work from office, then work from home, and now evolving into a hybrid. Uh, and at the same time, um, of course, offices now reopening, companies wanting to get their people back, uh, but maybe into you know, an environment which is slightly uh, different from what it was uh, to be able to 
you know, deal with the kind of situation that we've dealt with in the pandemic. Um, lastly, uh, I would like to say that we've got uh, 10 teams here, uh, the 10 top teams who made the finals. And uh, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to, uh, you know, hearing the presentations and the jury members, uh, you know, doing their bit into judging, you know, the winners. I, uh, on behalf of everybody, all of us here, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, wish all the teams the very best and uh, may the best team win. And thank you, thank you so much for joining us uh, at this competition. And uh, I hope you will all enjoy, uh, you know, listening to the presentations that are made in the course of the afternoon. Thank you. Ravina? Kiran? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. I'll now request uh, architect Vivek Bhole, sir, to please uh, put on his camera and uh, address the audience. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Good afternoon and welcome to third edition of AIS Design Olympiad. First, uh, firstly, congratulations to entire AIS for carrying out this competition successfully in spite of the hindrances due to pandemic. I also wish best of luck to all the participant students and wish them best in their professional career ahead. So whenever I have a chance to give uh, some guidance to young architects and students of architecture, I tell the importance of attitude to be successful. So whenever I talk about attitude, there are three different ways I look at it. So because you people are just going to finish your architecture and then you are going to get introduced to this competitive world and whatever I'm going to talk is important if you, if you try to implement that in your profession. So when I talk about attitude, first is attitude towards yourself. So I always believe that one should not have superiority complex or inferiority complex towards himself. Either way, you lose your goodwill and then uh, your ability to learn and of course the opportunities. Uh, then comes attitude towards others. So when you don't take people for assume, uh, and arrogance and aggression in your behavior always take you away from the opportunity. So, how you deal with people is very important. You have to train yourself for that. Uh, attitude towards your work is very important. So unless you respect, love, and believe in your own work, people are not going to like it anyway. So this is what I always tell everybody. This is a tested formula for to be successful. But today, the world has become very competitive. Uh, almost every profession is saturated. And only attitude, skill, knowledge, and education, whatever you have achieved so far may not be sufficient. So today I believe that Indian architecture practice is at the bottom most in spite of the opportunities. So when I say this, this is a very bold statement. I have traveled across the world, more than 200 trips abroad, number of conferences and exhibitions I have attended. And I have seen work by the masters and I have seen work of uh, our Indian architectural firms. We are doing good, no doubt, but then we are not competitive enough. And I believe our firms are not equipped to handle projects just for the sake of example, something like T2 terminal. And even if you, they get opportunity, they, they if given chance, I've seen that the setups are not evolved to handle the commercial, you know, uh, not handle because we are uh, equipped for that commercial mass architecture. Um, then these big architectural firms, you now uh, mine is one of them, you can say, but they are bigger than uh, my own firm. So these big architectural firms are actually surviving on winning projects through, I call them pseudo competitions and charging very low fees. So many people come to me and they say, sir, so-and-so so -so architect got 
this project by charging so low fee. The biggest of the firms are putting less than 0.5% and few of them are even ready to do projects absolutely free. So uh, I believe that when the, the architectural service is given free, then client is the product. So all malpractices starts from there. So I don't believe giving services free because that is not going to uh, you know, improve your quality of service. Uh, and then when the senior architectural firms are giving free presentations and free services, it will become almost uh, absolutely impossible for budding architects to get opportunities. So today I'm going to give you some formula uh, to get out of this rat race. Um, the rat race is such where you know, the biggest of the firms are already participating. So I want you people to get out of this rat race first. And how do you do that? So I told you, uh, just hard work, skill, knowledge, that is not going to help. So there are three main aspects where you can actually adopt them and you get out of this rat race, you generate your own opportunities and then you work on international standard projects. So how you do that? So I believe technology is one thing which is moving very fast. And my generation or the previous generation we are not technologically friendly. So uh, we are not equipped. We are not, uh, you know, uh, we don't adopt very fast. So all the big international firms, when we look at them, they have already adopted what I call digital architecture. And that is what is missing uh, in a big way in Indian architecture. Even uh, when it comes to education, uh, I have got... Uh, so many friends, uh, my classmates are principal of architecture colleges. I had the uh, opportunity to discuss with them on different forums. I've discussed on the same topic. The way we are teaching our students is not the, uh, not the futuristic train what is needed. Uh, my son is in second year of architecture in LA in Sire. And his first presentation, the first semester's presentation, he did in uh, Unity, uh, gaming engine. And his second year's presentation, he is giving in uh, Unreal Engine again a different gaming uh, gaming engine, and they are using virtual re reality. And in the whole course, they are going to teach them more than eighty softwares. So already he is working on uh, more than uh, twenty softwares possibly, and they started teaching them coding in the first semester itself, because that is what is going to give you upper hand when it comes to competition with established firms. Uh, the second uh, aspect or the second uh, uh, way you can, uh, you know, compete with this uh, big firms or established firms is collaboration. This is a time of collaboration. You can see the mightiest corporates are actually collaborating and generating opportunities. So uh, even, even we are doing multiple projects with the firms across the country. And believe me, the amount of new avenues it opens for everybody is enormous. So we are doing one project uh, where uh, we are doing part of the uh, complex. There are more than seven sectors. So we are doing few sectors. Few sectors are being done by um, architect office contractor. Carl is handling that. And we had interaction just three days back. We had uh, a long interaction. Um, he suggested uh, so many changes in the plan uh, and the, you know, the, the architecture which uh, I had proposed and uh, even uh, the client wanted us to give comments on the design, what he had made. And uh, once you keep your mind open and you uh, interact with ideas, it is always like uh, a, a batsman, a good batsman will never make a century. There is a day when he has to give strike to the opposite batsman. So uh, someday that happens, but collaboration, it's the, the teamwork. That is what is very important. And you youngsters can always uh, find different, uh, you know, technological collaborations and build your own uh, portfolio in a way where you can actually compete in international projects. Uh, the third and the last, what I would suggest is adopting different technologies besides just digital architecture, uh, uh, then achieving multiple skill sets and specializations. So when I say multiple skill sets, 
computer or digital architecture is just one skill set architecture is another now coding coding is something which is uh, many people say why architect should do coding but nowadays marketing and coding are two subjects every profession every professional can actually utilize them and uh, achieve something which is uh, a unique selling point so i started doing coding 30 years back and i used to do a lot of coding in visual basic then c sharp and different scripting language like uh, ruby script for sketchup and that helped me to customize and achieve more uh, innovation in architecture i focus was always architecture but coding was a, a additional skill set specialization like a specialization in hospitals or maybe sports uh, arena or maybe uh, hospitality any specialization uh, specialization doesn't come with just uh, doing one project you will have to do it multiple times that is why our profession is called professional practice so you will have to do one type of project multiple times so that you minimize your errors you learn new things and you achieve a uh, proficiency on that particular topic and that is your specialization so if you keep on achieving those specialization multiple skill sets that is how you can compete with uh, established firms so these three aspects are very important technology collaboration and multiple skill sets and specialization so in fact uh, being a uh, curator of this uh, event uh, i am going to propose to incorporate all these three aspects technology collaboration and multiple skill sets in next as design olympiad uh, in the next uh, uh, edition our umbrella is going to be much bigger more colleges are going to be part of this uh, movement and uh, when we do this i think we the whole purpose of this competition is to give students some insight and some futuristic view the way uh, the material can be handled so the, the whole purpose is that and with uh, this uh, three additional suggestions from my side possibly we'll be able to achieve something different from students uh, this year i have seen uh, students have done good hard work uh, our expectations are very high uh, but then uh, i know the uh, educational uh, uh, commitments and uh, the competition uh, it's very difficult for students to handle but still Uh, i'll compliment all the students participants they have done wonderfully well and once again i'll uh, give them uh, all the best for today's uh, competition and let's uh, witness uh, one of the best competition uh, in today uh, um till evening so uh, let's start that's it thank you me. thank you vivek i i think those are very good insights uh, both for us as organizers but mainly largely for the students and we will keep it in mind and we will have further discussions with you you know going forward yes thank you thank you sir thank you sir um thank you architect vivek bhole for his knowledgeable words and guidance to the students present here uh, by sharing a great success formula i'm sure they will benefit from it uh, i would now request the team to take it from here and uh, start the presentations over to you tabish yeah hi ravina thanks uh, so before tabish calls uh, the first team uh, so uh, sir uh, we have already shared the evaluation sheet uh, with all of you so as soon as the presentation is getting over i uh, would request you to please evaluate uh, team uh, basis their presentation and to all the teams uh, all the best and uh, you have a time slot of uh, 10 minutes uh, for making the presentation so i would request you to stick to the timeline and uh, there is 5 minutes of question and answer round so maybe we expect uh, two to three questions uh, for for uh, every uh, presentation so uh, tabish we can start by calling the first team thank you sir thank you on this note we'll start uh, calling upon the first team of the top 10 finalists they are from the school of architectural ips academy indore the team leader name is dikshant madhekar the teammates are harshita vanskar and pushpendra patel they are from the central zone team uh, team can you just go and turn on your camera and uh, uh, share your screen please 
Yes, sir, sure. Sir, I'll share my screen. Yeah. And I'll let you know when to start, okay? Okay, sir. Just share your screen. Yeah, we can, we can see your screen. You may start. A very good afternoon to everyone present over here. Let me begin with a quote. It is not difficult to design a space that will attract people, but what is remarkable is how often that has been accomplished. Keeping this notion as our motive, we, a group of four team members, has designed our cultural and business hub. Now coming to the concept, we took the term neurodiversity. This refers to a natural variation in human brain in relation to the sociability learning, attention, mood, and other cognitive features. As speaking of the pandemic, a recent research stated that most of the effects and side effects of the pandemic are mostly neurological. So this agile methodology encourages collaborative, dynamic, and participative work, and it is formed by the categorization of spaces. This categorization of spaces is called as choreographic work format. This will, further include, uh, this will further help in inclusive design solutions for a post-pandemic work environment. And thus, the form evolved over here is with the interplay of levels to promote informal interface. Now, coming to the site study, the site is amongst one of the indoors highly commercial zones, having its connectivity with the major landmarks. And the road uh, and the site is majorly connected via a service road, not directly with the main road, and thus helping in the traffic flow. Now, coming to the climate analysis, indoor falls under the composite zone. Hence, it consistently experiences every climate or every season to its maximum, with its maximum temperature in the month of May and least in the month of January. This region is quite a windy one, with winds coming from southwest to northeast. Now coming to sustainability, we took the efficient use of daylight as a very major aspect, dividing it into two parts. The first is the passive method, that is the way to deal with the orientation and the climate responsive design features. Then the next is the active method that deals to incorporate technology with light sensors or electrical light controls. Then we took facade treatment into great consideration. The southern facade is with the louvers and vertical gardens to ease out the southern harsh sun while ensuring adequate amount of daylight and views. Moreover, reducing the built up form in the form of terrace gardens that helps to reduce the heat gain. East facade is a glazed facade with a planter rose to avoid the sick building syndrome. The west facade is the most spacious one with the decks and long corridors that gives access to the nature and for also a proper air moment across the building and terrace gardens thus acting as air purifiers. Now, uh, coming into the another consideration that we took is the materials. The materials that we took are uh, like cool roof that helps to maintain the lower roof temperatures in helping reducing the energy consumptions. Then we took louvers to support the natural light while keeping rain and excess of sun out. Another eco-friendly material is the fly ash brick. Then ma major part of the building is covered with glass that we further categorized into three parts. The first one is AIS EcoSense Excel glass present at the exteriors to avoid the uh, to, uh, to provide thermal insulation and solar control. Then the next is AIS clear float glass at the staircase envelope for clear vision without distortion. And the next is AIS crystal glass with its translucent property that provides privacy as well as aesthetics. Next. Uh, now coming over to other treatments, the first one is terrace gardens to reduce the indoor temperature by 6 to 8 degrees centigrade and can reduce air conditioning cost. These terraces are also accessible from offices as acting as breathing spaces besides the thermal advantages. The next one is radiant cooling system. It estimates the energy saving to be over 30% of traditional forced air, thus an innovative approach to comfortable high efficiency cooling. Water management, terrace gardens play an important role in rainwater harvesting by acting as catchment area, absorbing the incident rain and maintaining the water levels. Solar panels contribute to buildings energy requirement by converting solar energy to electricity. 
root zone treatment it is an approach to wastewater treatment uses wetland plants and naturally occurring microbes to remove contaminants coming over to design determinants for our presentation are volumetric disposition build block divided into two separate build blocks via bridges pedestrian movement around the build block connecting the open areas vehicular movement around the periphery of the site service roads and drop offs functional diagram of the block determined by hierarchy of closed and open spaces and then the figure shows new hybrid office format that prioritizes the user experience which encourages creativity coexistence and is flexible the next one is the site plan in this site plan the number 1 shows the pedestrian entrance followed by pedestrian circulation around the building the number 2 shows vehicular entrance leading to number 4 that is a drop off point near the building for vips and main entrance with roads to number 7 that is the parking shaded by bill block and auditorium itself the number 8 is the auditorium building followed by landscaping and water elements on number 9 and a service road around the periphery of the site number 10 The number three then shows the vehicular exits. The following are the views of the site elements shown: walkways and gardens, recreational spaces, parking and sitting spaces, southern side of the build block, and water body landscaping. Next. Now coming to the floor plans, the resumption of workspaces will have to be planned as a hybrid dynamic in which the possibility of working in different contexts will flex all relations between the employee. and workspace and perhaps it will be possible to really discuss flexible and agile spaces now the following floors are planned similarly with breathing spaces at several intervals and incorpor- incorporating biophilia with terrace gardens to generate positive energy environment uh, then a deck on each floor for collaborative experiences and a uh, staircase bridges promoting informal interplay throughout the building next to have a more holistic view of spaces and people so we can move forward in discussions about the resumption of work spaces after overcoming the pandemic this sectional view shows the elements in our build block open facade designs with open floor plans building to be naturally ventilated softening the separations between interiors and exteriors green plants to generate a positive change and roof gardens to focus the attention on circulation of indoor air thus investing in biophilia makes a lot of sense in the post pandemic thinking about the symbiosis between the nature and the built space the section here describes the various functional aspects of the building there are a supporting tubular structure to the walkway bridges and the building consists of five floors and the building height is up to 23 meter section a shows the core and the connecting bridges of building to each floor it is cut from the first facade of the building section bb shows the ups and downs of the level massing of the building and the main staircase it is cut from the south facade of the building elevations the south elevation describes the climatic effect of a sun on the build block and therefore the introduction of louvers or we could say the heat absorbing mechanism installations are made the west elevation describes the leveling down of the building and gives the main view to the connection of all floors through the pathways or bridges so that each user would be able to see each level from every point of the build block east elevation The description here is that the morning sun would appear on the eastern facade of the building, so maximum ventilation and light is accepted, and installation of lounges is given instead of louvers. And most importantly, we gave a concept of color wall here, which explains and affects the better working atmosphere and mindset of the user. It depicts brightness, energetic environment, increasing creativity, inspiring collaboration of warm and cool colors, and is a ease spot for visitors. Here are the exonometric plans of all the floors of the build block and the views of the exterior facade. Here are the overall site views and the views of the build block. The view describes the following as western side of the building showing decks on each floor and connecting bridges, solar panels on terraces, parking area, seating space, gardens and recreation walkways and pathways. Here we could see the door window schedule describing the opening sizes of the build block. Now speaking of the structural details, the wall sections have been shown with louvers, planters, and the view of glazing details. And the staircase bridges. If you have one minute left. And the staircase bridges are glazed and spanning over thirty meters and composed of steel units for parallel trusses. It is composed of white flan steel with steel columns at the base to support the complete span. Next. um tactile ground surface indicators and guide rails are introduced for better efficiency and the service court comprising of access access stairwells elevators and toilets and washrooms and is continuous to each floor of the build block 
and to the conclusion here is the office we designed with workspaces that provide the freedom of working for yourself with the community and creativity of a traditional job thank you thank you sir <clears throat> thank you team thank you for your presentation uh, thank you for completing on time now requesting jury members to come and ask the question to uh, to the teams and give their feedbacks over to you jury members Oh, my first question is uh, this is paul from bangalore i mean the immediate context of the site is not very clear could you explain that please just go back to the slide is it a empty space around the site where you have selected or there are buildings around that <clears throat> so basically the area around the site is uh, at present is empty It's there empty. are not uh, many buildings constructed over there okay if uh, there are any uh, any other jury members or not i think i do have two questions uh, name is raghuram now one is that the uh, i appreciate you know the efforts that you have taken as far as the uh, sustainability measures are concerned but when you got into the details uh, some of those details should perhaps reflect the detailing that you know you had talked about during the concept presentation the second point is that if you had created that kind of an open space uh, between the blocks uh, perhaps the drop off or the entrance and etc could have integrated with that particular open space so i i i leave it to you these are just suggestions or uh, comments because you having the drop off away from where that kind of an open space is actually generated the third point uh, which i have is um, of course you do have these uh, wind from the southwest but you also have the maximum radiation coming from the southwest so when you have a lot of these terraces on the south west western side uh, and the southern south and western side you're going to also have that risk of uh, of radiation so perhaps a lot more of these uh, you know semi open spaces or you know uh, terraces that shield each other um in some kind of you know screen walls those kind of things or even some of those colored walls could also have been used as screen walls so that is something that you could you could possibly think about right okay sir um i had one uh, question um you have um, taken the parking where you sort of cr uh, after the drop of you sort of cross over and then you go and park um so basically everyone is forced to take the long route to the parking at the back don't you think if you were doing a mlcp like a multi level parking it should have been sort of tucked away somewhere more discreetly towards the left side of the uh, site or something from whatever i can perceive <clears throat> where uh 70% of the people who come in their own cars and drive and park and get into the office uh that movement is very important um and i feel that is not really addressed like how does a person come in park and what is his uh experience uh while going to his workspace what all does he come across what are the if you are looking at a project like this it is it's got to be like a mini city because it's your second home um so where are the conveniences where are the uh, you know social spaces how do they uh, come in when somebody comes in do they go through the social spaces they don't how is that all envisaged i feel that is not really elaborated <clears throat> hey ma'am ma'am actually we had our party at the back because we wanted to connect a parking which is nearby the auditorium and the build block both so we take a service road to the parking and about the uh, recreational spaces we have different green pockets at different corners and uh, surround around the across the building so they create some open spaces and green spaces all right any other question 
I think the facade perspective, um, they, they did did some cladding and some uh, ventilated screen with the green, all this. But uh, did they study uh, putting this design? Did they study the window wall ratio versus con considering all the elevations and as well as the daylight studies? Uh, yes, sir, we took into consideration the daylight studies. Uh, and sir, uh, speaking of the wall and window ratio, uh, basically the facade is uh, covered with glazing. Uh, so we took the size of the glazing panels into consideration. And then on the southern, as, uh, as speaking on the southern side, we used louvers to uh, divide the glare of the sun. Okay, but proportionately, uh, you manage the window wall ratio with all elevations. For example, if you consider south 80 or 20 or 70, 30, then other elevations, have you proportionally done the design? Uh, no, sir, we did not look for that exactly. Okay, okay just for a knowledge purpose, the, you see every building has overall thermal transfer values. Why do you get a, mostly the roof thermal transfer values so is more higher than the envelope thermal transfer values? So this should be addressed in all designs. Also, you did you consider any roof uh, energy perspective point of any solar panel cladding or anything on that roof or on the facade? Uh, yes, sir. We uh, incorporated cool uh, cool roof tiles. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you, team. So now requesting jury member to give your marks, elevate the team as per the their uh, their presentation. And uh, now I welcome our next jury member, architect CS Raghuram, uh, to address the audience with this speech. He is a director at CRN and founding partner of Trilog Studio, which focuses on technology and sustainability. He is a visionary architect known for his classic and through provoking style. Aims to keep sustainability at the center of all his project. We are honored to have you on the jury panel, sir. Over to you, sir. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay. am, I, uh, am I audible? I hope. Yes, sir. We can uh, hear you. We can see you. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of this, uh, of this competition and to evaluate the competition. Um, <clears throat> you have already talked about, or you just mentioned, the focus that we are trying to bring in uh, as far as sustainability is concerned. And and how technology integrates with that in our projects. So, uh, and, and so therefore it's, it's great that one of the strong themes of this year's competition is uh, sustainability itself. And uh, we've already seen that in many of the uh, projects that the students are, uh, that are uh, presenting. Um, one of the key points that I would like to uh, highlight, uh, I also teach uh, at the School of Architecture in and planning in Chennai, SAP uh, in Anna University, uh, and also at Miyasi uh, College here in Chennai. Um, one of the things that I would definitely encourage all of these participants, because I'm seeing a tremendous talent uh, in, in all of these, in, in, these, in the work that you, you've uh, been, I mean, on, in these projects and the work that you're doing, I would strongly encourage you to also, you know, go out of, your immediate comfort zone and immediate projects, if you look at it, and try to engage in public spaces. Because we today are moving into, the, into, in, into a, a time where our building projects are definitely taking on uh, a, a very improved functionality and improved uh, aesthetic. Uh, there's, there's a lot of integration of specializations, whether it be in acoustics, whether it be in lighting, whether it be in uh, sustainability and so on. But sadly, our public spaces are not uh, keeping up. There are a lot of opportunities for uh, architects to engage with, with the government, uh, engage with the local bodies and so on. And I think that slowly over time, uh, we have the responsibility uh, to also improve uh, these, not just the spaces within our project realm, but also look at uh, public spaces. Of course, there's going to be a lot of red tapism. There's going to be a lot of bureaucracy. We ourselves are uh, helping the Chennai Corporation uh, to improve uh, some of the public spaces around 
uh, the um, main temple uh, in Malapo, uh, which is a heritage zone uh, here in Chennai. We are trying to improve uh, uh, walkways, um, open spaces, parks, etc. Of course, it is a very frustrating journey uh, because you're going to face a lot of bureaucracy, you're going to face a lot of politics. But uh, <clears throat> end of the day, uh, I think we should try to take that up as a challenge uh, and as a responsibility of ours. And seeing how, uh, seeing the energy of all of you, um, I think it, it's definitely possible. I think the future looks bright and uh, I, know I hope to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for to enlighten the audience with your pre precious word. I hope it will help the student in their career and respective field of study. study. Without any further delays, I will call out the next team. Where they are from the School of Architecture, IPS Indore. And the, the, the team leader name is Kushi Surana and the teammates are Surya Prakash Singh. Team, can you just turn on your camera and uh, share your presentation? Kushi, Surya Prakash. Is my screen visible? Yes. I'll let you know when to start. You may start. Okay, sir. Uh, a very warm good afternoon, respected jury members, viewers. I am Surya Prakash Chahan, a uh, student of School of Architecture, IPS Academy in Dar. Our selected theme for our topic uh, for the, today is Rethinking Education Institutions. And the topic of the project is Institute of Finance and Trading. So, uh, in my presentation, basically, I, I'll be talking about five aspects. Firstly, introduction of the project and team. Secondly, site and context. Thirdly, concept. Fourthly, the drawings. Uh, and lastly, sustainable and design views. So, the team consists of myself and Khushi Surana and our mentor, architect Sachin Palival, sir. Uh, now, what is an Institute of Finance? An Institute of Finance is an organization. Organization aims to provide education and research in money management, diversified courses, which include undergraduation, post-graduation, and certification courses. So basically, the project is divided into four parts. First is Institute, Day Trading, School, Investment Club, Coaching Center. This is the structure of projects and other details, aim and the objectives of the project, uh, which I'll be talking later in the project. Uh, so the site is located uh, in the central uh, central India, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Indore, the super corridor. And Indore is the largest city in Madhya Pradesh and is considered as the, considered at the as an educational hub of the state. Uh, these are the climatic. Uh, representation of climatic parameters such as wind rows, average temperature and precipitation, maximum temperatures. So the indoor lies in the composite climate zone. Uh, this is the temperature range, minimum and maximum, and the dry bulb temperature has been studied of the city throughout the year. Uh, this is the site uh, surrounded by two sites on the super corridors. Uh, and from the west, Indoor Jane Road, which is the highway. So the, this is a graphic representation which shows the wind direction, which is from west and southwest, uh, sun, sun path, existing trees, and the views which has been considered. The site area is 24,000 square meters, and the permissible ground coverage is 30%. Uh, now the major constraint was the longer site was facing the east and west, uh, and but due to the altitude and west, especially when indoor becomes very critical, west and east, because of the heat gain. And also the wind direction was from west and southwest. So uh, the idea was to puncture it enough and to reduce the heat gain from the west. So the building has been oriented, the build mass uh, in the east-west axis to reduce the heat gain and allow the winds from southwest and west to enter inside the building, uh, which has been kept. Uh, and the, the reduced part of the west exposure has a vertical devices, vertical shading device, which are basically green walls. 
uh, and on the east also jaini has been incorporated now the context uh, in dar has been identified because of the, its food streets it has been one of the foodiest cities of india and the two major food streets were sarafa bazar and chappan dukan which are like very popular and which has given in dar a spirit to the city now and also if we talk about the financial markets there are streets which are very famous like the lal street and the mumbai and the wall street in the new york and if we talk about in dar there was one of the old third oldest stock ex- stock exchange in the indore now all these parameters has been studied and the st- concept of street has been one thing which i found very common uh, now leaving the said uh, setback areas uh, and road networks and entry points have been planned and solar wind and views analysis has been done and then the uh, context of street has been incorporated and then further the form has been developed uh, keeping the climate uh, in the mind uh, and further fenestration uh, and vegetation has been thought of so this is an isometric showing the vertical zoning of the institutions of institution uh, so this is the site plan which shows the western part which is more of recreational uh, the sports area uh, this also shows the landscaping part and on the east side there are the street part which is a very in- uh, interactive space and which has this auditorium curvy linear volume uh, this is the basement floor plan uh which shows the uh, which has the zoning like the basement has all the recreation activities sports cafeteria area interactive spaces multi purpose room library washrooms the common rooms so uh, this is the oat as it can be seen here uh, on the right right part uh, it has it has been entirely done in the levels so there are two entrances which has been thought of firstly the step parameter uh, step parametric entrance which directly leads to the upper floors uh the oat part which directly leads to the auditorium part so this floor plan consists of lecture halls toilets and library uh this is the first floor plan which has the admin so basically it has the curvy linear uh, corridor primary corridors which leads to the secondary corridors which are done in a way which has enough punctures to bring in daylight inside the building central part has the uh, sort of uh, atrium space which has a skylight above it which brings the daylight inside the building this is the auditorium uh, second floor plan which leads to the auditorium uh, and the lecture halls and the third floor plan uh, this is the diagram showing an isometric section which has a seamless integration of the spine uh, which leads from the relatively to the road which has a seamless experience inside the building so first first axis has been planned which uh, leads from the parametric entrance towards the admin area and the first floor the second one is near the curvy linear volume which has the led display of which leads to the auditorium on the second floor uh, now the primary function of an institute uh, is to transfer knowledge from teacher to students which can be done beyond four walls of the classroom as seen in the asian gurukul system where knowledge transfer happens under the shade of tree now uh, the intent was to make a building a landmark on the super corridor square also to give the structure and identity that the people can identify the building is associated with financial institute education as well as which creates an excitement to know more about it now the curvy linear volume which has led display on it uh, give, uh, displays light uh, life uh, updates regarding the same also attracts people to gather around it sit discuss make the street more happening the parametric sitting sitting on the entrance of the building overlooks the display panel deliberately stationed to make an interactive space for students and professional to share knowledge interact and network so uh, this curvy linear volume has been cha- uh, has stopped uh, live prices displayed on a real time basis of different stock markets cryptocurrencies uh, currencies uh, everything so even the asai india uh, stock price can be seen here uh, so now these are the uh, pockets and the interactive spaces which i have planned where actual knowledge to transfer can happen which is beyond classrooms the, these are basically the renders uh, which shows uh, these spaces such spaces are integrated at various places in the institute where informal uh, knowledge sharing happens from teachers to students students to students and from students to teachers 
and where professionals also come and interact. Uh, these uh, knowledge sharing spaces plays a vital role in the student development process and also create memories which they are going to remember throughout their lives. Uh, now, this is the section which shows uh, how the daylight has been harvested inside a building. And I think the glass has been of excellent material to bring in uh, the daylight uh, as well as to block the other climatic parameters which, uh, which are required. Now, this is the section BB which shows how the buildings are mutually shaded and as well as the west has been protected. Now, these are the corridors which, has, uh, which are basically punctured and which acts like a bridge and uh, which uh, has a access to the probably, uh, team the you have one minute left uh, primary corridor so this is the text elevation now cool roof has been integrated and from the west has been the creeper and the vertical green has been incorporated now the glazing system skylight system so i've used uh, solar photovoltaic glass units uh, i use and for north glazing ais clear floor glass and the west and east part ais ecosense now this is the uh, east facade which has which which works like a jali system and protect the heat gain from the east and which has a pattern which uh, is a candlestick pattern of the representation of price on the uh, uh, price of the uh, of the particular stock now the sustainable effect factors have been incorporated such as waste water treatment uh, dairy institute redox uh, technology and the material palette has been kept minimalistic to reduce the carbon footprint. Rainwater harvesting. Your time uh, is, is up. A top view. So I'll just go through the views. Just that's yeah, it. just take a uh, take jury members all your slides yeah, yeah. one by yeah, one. Yeah. So these are the renders of the line daily. Parametric detail of the parametric uh, OAT. Uh, this is the view which shows the east view. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shurya. Thank you, team, for presenting your presentation. Now, requesting jury member to come and ask the question to, uh, to the teams and uh, give their feedback. Over to you, jury members. Uh, shall I? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to ask that, you know, when you look at an educational institute, um, it actually needs to speak a different language than that of, um, you know, like the typology uh, needs to reflect in the architectural language of the particular building. Like when you see a commercial building or an office building or an educational building, they all need to have pretty distinct typologies. I feel over here that... Uh, except for some of the open, semi-open spaces. Um, there is uh, otherwise very little that I feel uh, talks about it as an educational institute in terms of, um, you know, uh, where is the uh, learning center or the, uh, the basement has the recreation spaces or the clear delineation of the learning center. And really what is most important which I find is something that you need to address is the fact that your open spaces look very hard. Uh, if we are looking at the open uh, spaces uh, as an additional, as an extension of your educational spaces, you need to make them very soft. You need to make them very inviting. You need to make them very cohesive with the indoor spaces. And I think that's something which you need to look at instead of creating like a hard plaza kind of a look. Could I? Uh, yeah. Yes, I could. Could I go ahead? Yeah, yes. Yeah. See, uh, on the face of it, I think uh, the, the volumes that you have created gives a lot of potential to create some really nice spaces in, in, in within the institute now having said that i think where you had that whole auditorium Madhir, that open air uh, almost like an open air theater or auditorium i think that kind of gets cut away from the basement uh, where you have some of these recreation spaces now if you had looked at the levels a little bit 
and you could have had the the recreation spaces seamlessly merge and move into the uh, the corridors at the ground level and then this step down happens for that uh, that open air amphitheater type of a, a design then you kind of the boundaries and and you don't create these hard surface hard boundaries you know hard formal boundaries you kind of have mm. space that begins to flow a little bit more seamlessly and really it becomes a true educational collaborative type of a learning environment that is something that uh, i feel uh, you should really look at basically a section aa has these little literally these compartments you know you have this compartment of this building with this recreation space below that then you have this compartment which is your uh, auditorium or your open air theater and then you have the open space so that connection is not happening at the spatial level and that can have been done through management of the levels and designing in section the other thing is that uh, there's a there's a drafting uh, issue all play areas should always be oriented north south so please you know because you're you're in a, at an advanced level and you're going to be, be going into the profession very soon just make sure that's there because i don't you know sometimes employers uh, will be very harsh on you so please make sure that you know like if you're having badminton courts volleyball courts tennis whatever it is it's got to be north south so you don't have that sun in your eyes when you play okay so uh, uh, just to add something uh, you don't need interactive hall as such there is a space a big hall we are it an interactive space in educational institutes you have interactive spaces which are outside the corridors the plazas there are your interactive spaces and i don't know uh, the recreational spaces the sweating zone activities and the toilet they are like away from each other so people sitting in the cafeteria they will be looking at people who are going towards uh, your toilets and changing their clothes and uh, that kind of thing so i think the sweating activity the toilets for that they should be separate from your food court zone uh, and food court toilets that kind of uh, functional uh, aspects are missing on almost every floor okay i have a question can i go ahead yes sir yes okay see first of all i just want to tell you your form your your form a circular form it's very striking and it kind of like addresses the corner site so that is really a plus the second thing i want to ask you is about the circulation spaces actually do you think it could have been rationalized a little bit so that you know you don't have too many corridors or is there a reason for that uh so basically it has been thought of like uh, uh the primary corridor which is like uh, again a curve so uh, it appears like like a lot of this thing but uh, this idea was to create a different ex- experience altogether an institution uh, where it, where this there is a primary corridor a curve and then there are this thing uh, secondary corridors which are this thing uh, which leads to the this thing so the in terms of also when i thought of uh, something related to fire and all so uh, when there are this punctures and uh, where there is segregation so it is easy for them in terms of fire safety uh, to ev- uh, to evacuate uh, to to the building people uh, the students in, uh, inside the build- building okay but uh, i may not agree with that but anyway it's okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can i come in yes sir so uh, firstly guys uh, uh, good effort uh, and thanks for the presentation uh i think i agree uh, that the the corner condition of the two roads is is dealt with quite nicely and uh, i somehow feel that when you when you started doing this design you had a predetermined idea on this stock exchange aesthetic and you kind of got tied up with that idea while developing the overall plans and you know creating the spaces which is fine i mean uh, it's always nice to have one driving idea i think where you seem to have struggled is the size of the site versus the build form you you've neither you know you neither have meaningful uh spaces within the building 
and the ones which are outside i think uh, one of the jury members correctly pointed out that you know they're too harsh in terms of the landscaping so when you you know whenever you approach a program try and see the amount of built form you are creating and then how do you deal with the non built form areas essentially a, a good a good uh, striking balance of architecture is the spaces that you leave behind not the spaces you build on so here what's happened is you got tied up with that idea of the nasdaq wall and showing it to the rest of the city and all your outside you know all your spaces got left on the outside uh, which probably uh, ended up in you struggling with the overall plan uh, that's my only comment but otherwise a strong idea thank you sir thank you jury members to your feedback i'm sure the students are learning a lot today from your feedbacks now requesting jury members to go ahead and yeah now requesting jury member go ahead and evaluate the team uh, give your marks and also requesting mahesh sir and so uh, sonali ma'am to give the marks to the first team uh i've evaluated but you know I, i'm not able to put it into this so i'm just writing it on a separate sheet and then i'll compile it and give it to you okay ma'am we'll take it from you at the breakout session at the very yeah end. yeah yeah sure thanks ma'am now i request our, our next honorable jury on the panel architect karl wadia to address our audience with his speech architect karl wadia is a senior associate at the hafiz contractor he is a proud alumna of uh, columbia university new york he has immensely contributed to several iconic projects across various sector be it master planning residential commercial institutional or government building the esteemed jury recognize reco uh, among the top 50 architect in india over to you sir karl wadia sir thank you uh, good afternoon students and uh, first and foremost congratulations for uh, participating in a design competition uh, it takes a lot of gut to put together a team make that effort to apply for a competition and take out the time from your academic curriculum and actually put work together i think that automatically separates you out from from the rest uh, architecture is not a rat race Uh, you have to make sure that uh, whatever you are doing, you are absolutely enjoying it. And in platforms like this, where you are having a jury and you are having people commenting on your design, uh, everything that we say and everything that somebody says is for you to absorb. Whether you you know whether you utilize that or whether you don't utilize that is up to you. Uh, it's not something that you have to force yourself to utilize those comments. you just have to absorb it let it sit with you in a while and then you never know you know 6 months down the line or 5 years down the line when you're doing some other design some of these comments might come to life so uh, hats off to you guys to participate here keep participating in more and more design competitions because it keeps you uh, at the edge of your work and it makes you want to do better and better each time it helps you hone your skills of presentation be it verbal or through 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 drawings or through uh, through video but that's very important and all the best to you guys thanks a lot uh, this wonderful speech sir we are delighted with the, your expertise and knowledge in every way possible we feel extremely over well being a part of listener to your speech uh now uh, we are calling our uh, uh, garima ma'am so to take over and we are uh, starting with the quiz contest for the audience who are connected at the auditorium to make the to make them engagement yeah over to you garima thank you tabish and thank i would like to thank all our students out here who are participating in this competition and also to all the students who are attending as, as an audience here so we have something for you today is in this uh, event it is the adio quiz i will be sharing these questions five questions on my uh, screen right now you will be able to access these quiz and uh, you will be able to answer these questions on the portal there is a tab in which uh, you have the option uh, of a quiz you can click on that and you can answer these questions one by one we will be recording your answers and the uh, winners will be rewarded at the end of this event today so the first question in the quiz is what is the name 
for an architectural drawing of a building's exterior. Option one, floor plan. Option two, elevation. Option three, facade. Option four, landscape. This is the first question. It will be flashing on your screens in the portal. You can answer this. You can select one of the options. You have some seconds for that before I move to the next question. The next question is, what is the glass part of a window called? Option one, pane. Option two, blind. Option three, shutter. Option four, sill. I can see some of you answering on the chat. I would request you to rather log on to the StreamGo portal and in the auditorium, in the lower option, there is an, a tab called quiz. You can click on that. The question is flashing on your screens here likewise, and you can answer it. Question number three, which part of the church is often made of stained glass? Option one, the floor. Option two, the altar. Option three, the windows. Option four, the doors. I hope our audience has participated in the quiz and giving us maximum right answers in the quickest possible time. Question number four, who designed the Louvre Museum, Paris? Option one, Zaha Hadid. Option two, Cesar Pelli. Option three, I am Pai. Option four, Renzo Piano. And last question for today. Great Bath belongs to option one, Mohenjo-daro, option two, Harappa, option three, Indus Valley, and option four, none of the above. So thank you all. Thank you so much for participating in the quiz. And the max, the one with the maximum right answers will be rewarded towards the end of this event. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank much, Karima, for this uh, engaging and interactive activity. Uh, on that note, I would call up on stage uh, group three from JJ School of Architect, uh, Vaishnavi Patel and uh, Pallavi Jana. Students can uh, share their screen. Should we start? Uh, Pallavi, I'll tell you when to start. Wait. Yeah, you can start now. A very good afternoon to everyone present here. I'm Vaishnavi Patil and here's my teammate Pallavi Jana. We both had the same thought in the mind to create a sustainable mixed-use commercial complex, uh, which inspired us to explore with this uh, design. So integration of collaborative environment is our aim to design a building that is self-sustaining, dynamic, and intriguing. This is accomplished by providing a mixed use functions that caters to the wide range of users. Next. The site is located in Belapur, Navi Mumbai, Maharashtra, and has a tropical climate. Site receives the monsoon wind from the southwest direction and for the rest of the year it receives from the northeast direction and shown in the image here there is a height restriction to the site which means they need to take an noc for the height of the structure from aai as we can see uh, the site images the location is covered in the green flora which gives us gives it a refreshing look also, the surrounding area lacks a specific architectural style, giving an impression of being in a suburban setup. The view uh, of the creek water 
uh, is the highlight of this site greatly relaxes the minds of the visitor also therefore this is a prime location since it has a view of the creek and it is surrounded by the residential commercial and the institutional structures nearby uh, this site was chosen because it is well connected by the highway to the uh, surrounding nearby uh, areas allowing the convenient access to the site and also because of the site proximity to the airport proposed in the navi mumbai and in the coming year it will get uh, connected to the rest of the globe soon a conceptual idea behind this design uh, we come up with the preferred orientation and the wide zoning of the building based on the study uh, site study we did we attempted to break the rectangular mass into the form for the building we thought that the giving a work places additional height in terms of the massing would provide them a more view and the glare for natural light and in case of a shopping complexes however it is necessary to have more frontage and no exterior view and this frontage must be visible to the population passing through uh, uh, near the site so in order to draw their uh, also to draw their attention towards the advertisement displayed on the shopping complex so we thought to go with this idea as uh, illustrated in the form develop uh, develop in this drawing and later we introduce the facade treatment based on the climatic conditions that will also help uh, help to achieve a sustainability such as we introduce the solar panels on the southwest facade and the green buffers on the north side uh, north side of the facade uh, as shown in the image that which will provide the adequate natural light to the office floor uh, next hence uh, these are our final design approaches that we used to get a final design starting from the aim to connect this uh, building to the creek and the promenade aesthetically then the create a resp uh, responsive environment by generating interactive urban nodes with the less vehicular movement throughout the site next this is the master plan with the surrounding context the site has a total area of 13000 square meter and the 40% of the ground coverage is achieved through this design uh, this slide shows the different vehicular circulation inside this site to avoid the overlapping of the circulation uh, we separated the office and the retail entrance and uh, yeah uh, next this is the view of the office uh, entrance yeah over to pallavi since we have designed the mixed use commercial complex having two main functions offices and retail along with eateries the planning is done in such a way that the building remains as one entity with uh, two separate functions and the fluid landscape throughout the uh, site helps to form the interactive urban nodes uh, for pedestrians and also act as green buffer zones uh, this is a grand view of the uh, entrance showcasing people engage in various activities as well as uh, the vehicular movements as seen here like to achieve the total parking requirements we provided two basement floors the first basement accommodates uh, building services requirements with the parkings and the second basement floor provides the parking with the uh, multi level parking facilities to accommodate large number of cars uh, the first floor of the building is mainly covered by the retail functions and uh, this is the interior view of the atrium depicts a crowd of people doing their shoppings and the second floor includes a food, uh, food court with the retail functions and uh, three medium size office units um the third floor has a co-working office along with a terrace floor for the retail block and there is a provision for restaurant on the roof uh, which will have a visual connection to the creek and formal sitting areas uh, are also provided on the terrace which can be used and hired by the co-working offices this is one view of recreation sitting at the terrace floor uh, this is one view of a restaurant which is at a uh, third floor and this is another view of the restaurant from the different angle 
uh, yeah, about the office tower, uh, there are a total 12 number of floors uh, provided. The fourth floor to 11th floor uh, have a flexible floor plate plan to accommodate different size offices. Uh, offices. The office floor plate starting from fourth to uh, 11, uh, the, uh, have uh, double height breakout space taking advantage of north light. Uh, this is the view of office tower from uh, west direction. Uh, yeah, this diagram depicts the building vertical circulation, which include the fire staircase, uh, passenger lifts, service lift, and the escalators. Yeah, this section cut through the longer side of the building, showing the volume of various spaces, uh, starting from the at uh, atrium space of retail and to the double height uh, entrance lounge of the office tower with its freestanding canopy. And... Uh, and the double height breakout spaces of the office tower at the northwest facade. And the details are showing of the curtain wall and the photovoltaic panel. Yeah, this uh, slide depicts the office tower elevation and section. The tower is uh, 51 meter in height. And the material here we used AIS EcoSense glass. Uh, this product is sustainable, solar controlling and having low U value. And in the section, we can see the double height uh, breakout spaces. These green buffer zones are created as a cavity or void in the building's volume to ensure sufficient natural light within the building and makes nature an integral part of the workspace. And these voids also create a visual point of interaction with the other floors and giving everyone a sense of, uh, for, uh, sense of belonging. So according to the site solar insulation study, we come up with the facades areas that required special attention. And uh, another attention is given to daylight harvesting while designing the building. The aim was to maximize visual comfort and to reduce the energy consumption. So by this design, we achieved maximum 70% daylight factor throughout the office floor. Uh, yeah, this is the roadside elevation from the southwest direction, where we can see the three types of facade treatment, uh, including GRC, Jali, snapping facade, and the PV facade. So, um, on the uh, snapping facades, uh, uh, we used it in the north uh, northwest direction. Uh, the, uh, we treated this double glazed glass facade with the snapping facade treatment, which uh, an alternative approach for a dynamic facade system using snapping induced motion. So the benefit of this facade is that without complicated maintenance, user can participate in the dynamic movement of the building envelope for play, fun, and energy saving. Uh, the office tower southwest side elevation, uh, uh, southwest side exterior is enveloped with the GRC Jali. The Jali is installed in a metal frame over the infield glass curtain wall to reduce the direct glare and allow diffuse light to penetrate the facade. And the, Last, cavity, uh, one minute, one minute. Yes, the cavity between these two surface provides a stack effect. And uh, this is the facade uh, where we use the PV uh, photovoltaic panels. Uh, we uh, placed it at the 45 degree directions uh, to catch the different angle sunlight throughout the year. And uh, by the side analysis, we come up through that uh, the uh, areas will be covered, uh, most of the uh, areas to get the um, uh, comfort. And uh, for the rainwater harvesting, almost 40% of the site water's requirement can be made through this harvesting. And this, uh, uh, this is the um, uh, detail of uh, main office entrance door. And these are the some views, uh, like this is a view of entrance. And this is a view from outdoor sitting at the terrace. And this is a view from Office Plaza. And this is a view from the font uh, Office Plaza in another direction. And this is the final view, uh, aerial view of the building. And like, as we stated from the start, we believe in the integration of collaborative environments, which is a uh, must in today's world to prepare for future needs. We presented the idea of a mixed use structure through this design. Yeah, Thank you. Time up. Thank you. Uh, now I request Juri uh, to provide their feedback. Over to Juri. Sure. 
shall i yeah okay so uh, hi um i just had a couple of things uh, what i like in your presentation and your design is the fact that you have created on the north side a staggered open terraces which i think uh, gives a lot of interest and nice outdoor uh, spaces to every floor i think that's a nice addition however i do have a lot of concern regarding couple of things one is that you have put retail in the lower block which is if i am not mistaken facing the creek so there is a park in front and then there is a creek there's a waterfront am i right uh, yes ma'am so uh, that entire retail is a very closed area it's a mall type internalized retail and it really encourages zero movement outside uh, if it was a high street retail then you could have had people moving around but in this current format of retail that you proposed which is completely internalized i see zero uh, sort of uh, response to the waterfront and the park in front you know so which i think is not correct you need to utilize uh the uh, natural sort of uh, parameters and resources that are available and um, exploit them uh, as a part of your design rather than close them off so this was one thing and uh, second thing is that when you have that pattern like a grc jali on your facade uh have you done any study as to what kind of shading is it giving because uh, i don't know how much shading a jali design like that would give so have you done any studies in order to arrive at the amount of shading and the open or some sort of a exercise on that account or is it just a pattern uh, no ma'am actually we did not uh, done uh, that much study so that a pattern like this probably will not uh, give you any kind of shading because it's just a pattern and i also feel that this pattern and the solar panels which you have looked at at the other level so they are all sort of as design elements very disconnected so that's another point that you know don't put a pattern you need to have one uh, storyline or one design theme that runs through and binds all the different areas together as a entity uh instead of having different different things happening at different places so these are my comments yes ma'am we will look into it thank you ma'am may i may i step in uh yeah uh, is this part of your uh, college uh, design uh, assignment uh yes sir yeah because for third year this is very well detailed out so uh, i i found uh, the basement and a uh, lot of services you have taken care uh, but then as uh, sonil ma'am says uh, this could have been a very good high street retail and uh, because you have got hardly uh, any shops uh, inside your atrium so you can achieve that uh, or maybe open gallery a kind of concept could have been much better a multi story open gallery besides that i think uh, for third year this is very well worked out thank you sir okay from okay. from yes sir yeah hi guys uh, so i think i uh, i agree with what vivek said uh, it's you you know you guys have put up quite a lot of effort in putting together many many uh, slides and you know your plans are worked out your sections are worked out just couple of things in terms of site response it would have been nice to do a longitudinal section through your site across the park and down to the water edge to see and i think if you would have done that section you might have been tempted to step the building you know like a cruise liner towards the towards the water you know sometimes just drawing a section that you need not have drawn will tempt you into an idea that you probably didn't come across first uh, so you know try and get into the habit of drawing sections there are well beyond your site boundary you know into the next two three sites try and pick up some geography in your sections you never know what solution will come out of it another thing which is a slight concern 
now this is something you learn along the way in your professional career but you know uh, your office plate uh, i noticed that on one of the sides it's uh, it's d- easily deeper than about 30 meters and uh, looking at your floor to floor height with a 30 meter office plate you'll find that you know towards the core you will have no kind of natural light penetration whatsoever and it's a uh, funny how you've called the building we work uh, because these uh, these we work people in fact uh, when they select offices uh, they do get into the the criteria of daylight penetration to the last uh, office staffer so you probably want to make sure that your office plates are never beyond 13 14 15 meters obviously it results in inefficient buildings but that's a challenge you will face going forward in your career but otherwise i won't comment on the design and the elevation but otherwise well put together presentation in terms of sheer volume of material thank you sir thank you juri thank you for your feedback and guidance i would request you to grade team 3 uh going ahead i invite next team uh, group 4 from bhanu ben nanavati college of architect bhageshri alai divya hello a very good afternoon to the respected jury panel and all our audience it's an absolute honor for us to be presenting our work in front of you all today our topic for this project is rethinking educational spaces wherein we have designed a heritage art school for the glorious city of nashik we have a team of four students from dr banu ben nanavati college of architecture pune we would like to first start by uh, explaining our design brief nashik is a vibrant city in northern maharashtra with its first historic reference during the time of ramayana it has come a long way to emerge as one of the fastest growing cities across the globe but with this development the local art and culture is facing a hard time the very essence of rich goda ghat is suffering and so are the artists the aim here is designing an institutional building to educate and promote local artisans of the area with architecture that not only represents the local culture of the city but also promotes sustainability a place where artists will not only carry forward their art to the next generation but they will also make a living by teaching our design goals deal with mainly two factors art and architecture so as the topic suggests rethinking educational institutes here the whole environment of education does not limit to classrooms uh, we welcome every citizen every tourist all age groups and people learn through workshops and experiences along with the art we also aim to help the contextual architecture we aim to design a structure that understands the need of modern time yet conveys the culturally rich vernacular architecture of the city we would like to mention that two of our team members visited the site personally and interacted with the residents and the artists and some of the arts and crafts we have studied are firstly like copper smithing uh, and <clears throat> tribal pa- paper mache mask making tambatari is part of uh, ancient settlements in nashik which houses highly skilled craftsmen in copper smithing they are the living heritage of the city but now they are suffering a sharp decline in their craft tribal paper mache mask making used to be a prominent practice here which is left with their last generation in practice arts like live sketching pottery varli painting flourished in the old times on the banks of river godavari and now need to be further promoted some emerging arts like cotton sculpture making and innovative ideas need to be promoted 
we also remember the great personalities from the city whose legacy we are aiming to carry forward. Our site sits on bank of river Godavari, and this area is known as Panchavati. Godavari River is one of the holiest places for Hindus all over the world. The riverbed has a 24 tirthas, that is Kunda. It is a spot from where the river turns at an angle of 90 degrees. The reason behind choosing this site was, this is the heart of Nasik city, where the heritage is still breathing and living. It is the main tourist spot. Having a heritage school here will not only help in teaching the locals, but also local arts and culture will get a global recognition. This diagram shows the exact location of the site. Road network and surrounding development, which is the mostly residential, religious buildings and some commercial areas. Moving on to the physical conditions of the site. The site has an existing plinth of a 3 meter height made up with a stone retaining wall. Area is around 3,000 square meters. East and north sides are open, having a breathtaking view of river. We would like to mention that we are redeveloping the site as it houses some ruined structures. These are the views from a site. We are retaining stone steps, plinth, stone steps and plinth of the site. These images show disturbing contrast between the architecture then versus now. Hence, we are using contemporary vernacular architecture style, which is a blend of modern and historic architecture. We have considered arches, courtyards, dome, jali, balconies, temple planning as design elements which are inspired by historical building of the city. The idea here is abstracting and simplifying these elements while using them in our design. These are some options that we tried out for form development. To arrive to this form, we followed this process, placements of volume on site, scooping out arches, opening out spaces into amphitheater and courtyards, addition of floors. This is the block development process. Zoning. North-south orientation of structure gives opportunity to take in north light. Open courtyard planning ensures wind movement throughout the site. Aim is to merge the built and unbuilt volume and maintain visual connection throughout the structure and also with the surrounding, including interactive spaces to enhance liveliness in the structure. The floor plans. Ground floor plan. The existing steps and the lift is used to reach the plane. We enter into the site through an entrance plaza, which is covered by a pergola. From where we can access the area of admin and exhibition hall. From the entrance plaza, there is a circular courtyard, which is two steps down and is covered by a glass room. This area is used for exhibitional purposes. The pottery, barley workshop area, and the adjacent semi open areas can be accessed by circular pathway around the courtyard. The courtyard and the amphitheater are linearly connected through a central plaza uh, around, the court, uh, around the courtyard. Uh, through a central plaza, which gives access to the common washroom, staircase, staff room, and cafeteria. Central plaza is covered by toughened glass. The circular pathway around the amphitheater leads towards the lecture hall, which is provided with internal staircase to access the library on the first floor. The first floor plan. The central plaza on the upper floor provides access to the workshop spaces. It also leads to the circular pathway around the dome from where the green roofs can be accessed, which faces the riverfront and becomes a perfect area for live sketching and interacting programs. All the sides of the library open into the balcony which serves as semi-open reading areas. The roof plan. Circular roof of the library has solar panels which slope towards the south. For the sharing of open spaces, we have done the use of Jali Pergolas. This is the door window schedule. The sections. The first section shows the level difference of the structure, and the second one shows the double facade, which helps in sun shading and weather shielding. Last and one minute, Madhura. 
elevations show different type of fenestration and elevational treatment used for the structure. These are some of the views. We are using a 600 mm thick rammed earth wall, which reduces the heat gain and provides spectacular effect in the contemporary projects. And also filler slabs are used, which is light in weight and reduces the use of concrete. Um, fenestration and use of glass detail. Uh, here are some mentions. And we would like to mention that we have used, done the use of glass cross uh, wall in cross pattern which are seen in the Vardas and temple architecture of Nashik in the form of double facade. We wanted to maintain a connection with the context which are inspired from the old Vardas in the Nashik. These are the fenestration details. The arch window is partially openable and it is fixed with patches as shown on the slide. And for the corner arch window, the edge is filled with the silicon sealant and the glass are fixed with the clamping patches. Hereby, I would like to conclude our presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Madhura and team. Uh, now I would request Juri uh, to give feedback and uh, create the team. Over to you, Juri. Okay, I think I'll go first. I think it's a, it's a very good, simple plan and you've done extensive site analysis and studies and your plan that you have derived is basically from the studies that were done and simple sustainability techniques that were taken from, what do you say, what was practiced long, long back and good presentation also. But my only observation or question is, uh, I mean, your facade looks totally different. Why you didn't use any design language from the existing buildings that was there actually. I mean, I see glass. Is it because you wanted to do use the AAS glass? Uh, so, sir, uh, actually, uh, it is uh, an institutional building that we are designing here. And when we see the context there, it is uh, mostly the old buildings, uh, even the Vadas and uh, all that. Uh, or the temples, they have black basalt stone. So if we've go, gone for that kind of uh, planning, then the light, uh, the daylight, the indoor light levels would have dropped down. And also we need a lot of semi-open spaces in this, uh, 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 you know, uh, our project because there is uh, different crafts and uh, pottery like thing which need the outdoor uh, spaces also. So that is why we have gone to uh, somewhat open, semi-open planning. Uh, sir, also, uh, could we share the screen once again? Bhagishi, could you share the screen? Elevations, elevations and sections. So uh, I would like to speak about uh, what we have uh, like what we have used from the existing architecture and how we try to blend it with the uh, modern architecture because we mentioned it that we are going to use contemporary and vernacular style. So uh, <clears throat> around the site, uh, the, uh, the, why we have given a glass dome is uh, the main reason is around the site we have a reference of the Ramkun Chhatri. The Chhatri is a simple dome. So uh, that dome, we have tried to uh, introduce in our design by using the glass and um, also giving it uh, that effect. And the arches, uh, as you can see, we have done the use of jalis and the profile of the arches are inspired by the Kalaram Mandir. Uh, so in that format, we have tried to incorporate both the uh, existing design like uh, the historical and the vernacular design into our um, uh, building. And uh, why the use of rammed earth? Because basically we wanted to promote uh, earth construction, which dates back. And uh, also it complements what we are trying to uh, uh, promote to the uh, society, the art. So when we look at the earthen plots, uh, earthen pots or the... Um, Varli painting or the tambat uh, uh, crafts. 
so when you look at the school it, it just reminds you of those arts that is why uh, instead of using stone which is the uh, basically used in that side we tried to uh, go with the rammed earth construction and uh, when you look at rammed earth construction it uh, automatically gives that effect yeah and i don't i don't have a problem with the uh, rammed earth construction so basically what you are saying is your design intent was uh, contemporary vernacular for the facade yes sir yes sir okay, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, thank you so much for the feedback. I, and, uh, yeah, ma'am. I have just one quick question. Uh, you have river actually on two sides of your site, uh, but you have uh, gone in for a design uh, approach which is extremely uh, axial, axial and a single axis, uh, which only addresses towards the steps which are existing which are also quite small compared to the overall um, uh, you know uh, opening of the site towards the water is there any reason that you've not looked at the sides at all i mean the other longer side which also has a waterfront number one and number two is it that you've got so governed by symmetry and axes that you found it difficult to break away and um you know, look at the informality that needs to come in for an educational institute. You know, this has become extremely rigid and uh, axial, you know, like everything is symmetrical, same spaces, same form. So is it that you got maybe too entangled in that? So that was my second concern. Besides that, I like the rammed earth. I think it's lovely. Uh, the, uh, you know, the base, the facade that you got created with those large arches is also, it's nice because it has its own language. Uh, it also addresses uh, sustainability and local material. But the last uh, element that you have, the last building, which has some solar panels, looks completely disjointed from the rest of it. Uh, so that is also another concern because that building only looks as if it's from somewhere else okay uh, hello ma'am so firstly uh, yes we do have two river fronts but uh, when we see the actual condition of the site uh, the longer river front it has road like uh, it is a main access road and also uh, there is a certain uh, margin that has to be uh, maintained uh, for the river bank uh, in that particular area because uh, yes there are steps to access the river uh, in inside the river only but in case the water level increases in that case we have to keep that margin and also in the development that has happened in the riverfront area there they have uh, uh, you know restricted the construction part of it uh, like next to that boundary which is kept that we have maintained and uh, yeah about the symmetry, um, firstly, the site itself is very uh, longitudinal site and we wanted to uh, make the maximum use of it. And also there is we uh, we have taken some reference from the temple architecture. So uh, in to maintain that reference, uh, we um, planned it in a symmetrical fashion. And if Madhura, you want to comment further. No, that's all we, what we wanted to uh, comment. And uh, to uh, like reduce the rigidity, we tried to include uh, spaces like semi-open spaces and those jallies. So that, uh, and also we have given uh, glass uh, facades, like the central plaza is of made up of glass. So that the rigidity could be reduced and uh, uh, interaction could be increased. Uh yeah, and the certain meeting points, like when you enter, there is a courtyard, which is a very semi-open and fluid space where you go in and out of the structure. And also behind the, uh, like, uh, there is another circular planning, which is amphitheater, that is also a semi-open space. So we, we try to balance out that rigidity factor in such kind of uh, spaces. Thank you. Small comment. Uh so guys, uh, I, I won't comment on the design and everything. I think everybody's done that quite well. Um, you know, when you when you explore a new material like uh, uh, rammed earth, it's funny. We are calling it new, although it's old. 
but it's a new material in terms of its technology at least it's not widely used but it i, I would just recommend uh, explore it fully before you start interpreting in 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 drawings because the way you've shown the rammed earth getting chopped at the arch you would never get that aesthetic because to to get the rammed earth you would have to first build an rcc lintel and then pump the earth from the top so your bottom of your arch would never be having a rammed earth aesthetic so these kind of things you know when you get into a new material just understand it little bit more before you start actually interpreting in in your three dimensional and two dimensional drawings that's it yes sir thank you yes uh, thank you jura so uh, any comments from you or ragu raguram sir uh, no i am good i am good okay. thank you uh, i request jury to great team four and uh, as of now we are uh, uh, we are done with the four presentations and six more presentations are there uh, would you like to take break jurors we can uh, probably do one more and then take a break okay. i mean I, i'm flexible yes. whatever the yes. i think that's okay we can do one more yeah okay, okay. uh so i call up uh, next uh, presentation uh, of team 5 pratyush anand aman raj uh, sobit sharma and aritro from uh, school of planning architect new delhi students you can uh, start your uh, presentation audible uh yeah screen is visible you can start uh, now hello and good afternoon everyone our team comprising of four members from fourth year bachelor of architecture from school of planning and architecture new delhi we present to you jp international school can educating children help in the battle against climate change this was the question with which we started our quest for this competition through this project we envisaged a building that would change the way children are taught about sustainability a building that would become a concrete part of curriculum to educate students and communities over many years of change jp international school is an educational building located on a site area of 3.7 acres with an occupancy of 1200 students the site is located in sector 134 of noida uttar pradesh within the development zone of jp wish town the surrounding area is a majorly residential area lying in a composite zone the temperature of noida ranges from 7 degrees to 44 degrees which is a cooling dominant area the school is being designed to cater to the mixed diversity of people living in the locality being developed in stages the area holds multinational offices with high class occupants the wish town is scattered across four nearby sectors and this is the site located site allocated for school building the front face of the site is in the north direction with the winds flowing in to north and northeast following through analysis of the site we formulated these goals which help guided the design process so some of our design objectives are uh, protect engage learn nature and explore the school design is driven by daylight and solar radiation the building's longer face is oriented towards north south in order to reduce the heat gain through solar radiation from east and west side courtyard spaces are incorporated in between to bring in additional light and create a cool macro climate and classrooms are staggered to create mutual shading light wells are provided between the classroom and corridor which is a act as a buffer zone it helps to enhance the daylight intake inside the building and reduces the noise level we formulated this program based on the areas required for conditioning of high end school we provide six classes for pre primary 15 for primary and middle eight classes for high school student for extra curricular activities and lab rooms are placed on each floor for easy accessibility for all age group the building are from respond to the site and the site is reflected in the building plan 
Coming to the side plan, we have a pedestrian and bicycle entry with a cycle stand. The path from there leads people into the main building. The building block are surrounded by a six meter wide fire tender path, which is paved with permeable paper. We have placed solar panel on the roof to harvest energy. The playground on the south side of the building. In the ground floor plan, we students have their classroom at number one, which is very close to the entrance. And they are separated, they are separate playground in the east side, which has a natural surveillance, making it a safe space for younger students. These students have all their daily activities on lower floors for ease of access. On the south side, wind tower is integrated on facade. The admin is provided at the back. Green courtyards have been incorporated between the building's block to naturally bring down the surrounding space temperature and create a cool macroclimate. This courtyard also act as a breakout space for students, which give them give them chance to interact and nature in the dense urban context of Noida. All these strategies add up to provide a healthy environment for students, mm -hmm. which would promote their physical and mental health and also boost their productivity. Older students have their classroom and activity space on the upper floor. These students have all their activity rooms and laboratories in the south zone across the courtyard. Also, some passive strategies are incorporated into design to resist urban heat island effect, like tree, plantation, and swales. All interior materials and finishes used are VOC free and provide good acoustic insulation to make the classrooms noise free. We performed a UDI analysis on design. The base case model had a flat wall without any shading. In this case, the analysis showed that the area near the window has high glare index and was receiving high amount of sunlight exposure. In the proposed case model, we uh, shaded the, uh, shaped the buildings in such a way that it reduces direct sunlight falling onto the building facade uh, by mutually by shading. In this case, the analysis showed that the area near the window was nearly glare free and has enhanced useful lighting conditions. The annual sunlight exposure was also low, that is 8% per year. In terms of passive strategies, central courtyards are provided in between the building blocks to reduce the thermal stress on the environment and act as a place of interaction. Also, having these exact walls in our facade not only enhances the daylight performance with uniform exposure in the class, but also creates a happening facade and defies the need of shading device. Lighting sensors are installed, which reduces light energy consumption by almost 70%. It also maintains a happy and productive learning environment. We have used AIS glass for window glazing in different configurations on different facades, keeping in mind the cost, the solar heat gain coefficient, SHGC, the U value and the visible light transmittance. In the north facade, single glazed window with high SHGC and high VLT can be preferred as there is no direct sunlight on the face and there is a need to get in more light. The east, west and south facade has a high radiation and high heat gain and hence we have opted for doubly glazed unit with low SHGC and low UL. To analyze the comfort quality, we adopted the IMAC model and the IMAC band was plotted against the operational hours and the humidity level between 40% to 70% for a comfortable living. We analyzed the operational hours throughout the year by superimposing the temperature output from wind tower with the IMAC mixed mode model and found out that 77.8% of hours lie in the comfort band without any use of refrigerant cooling with 30% of these hours required to maintain humidity levels. Also, we analyzed the fresh air requirements and adopted the displacement ventilation method, ensuring that fresh air is adequately maintained at all times. Coming to the energy aspect, the energy efficiency has been achieved through passive strategies. Upon simulating in Design Builder, we are achieving around 60% reduction in total consumption. Starting with the passive strategies, we reduce the conditioning loads by almost 80%. Also, highly efficient window glasses by AIS and installing lights, lighting sensors we have achieved 73% reduction in lighting loads only. To bring down the cooling energy more, wind towers are incorporated with VRF systems are being proposed for this school. 
air is then circulated to classrooms through air handling units after treating for humidity and other particular matter matters and is passed through heat reclaim ventilation unit for refrigerant cooling uh, without uh, before going into the classrooms the output air is then passed through diffusers placed on the walls inside the classrooms the flow chart is as shown in the figure coming on to water performance this diagram provides a overview of the multiple pathways designed for water flow within the site which helped us achieve a water balance inside fresh water sources supply the initial water demand for various uses in the building which then starts two cycles of water reuse one through the phytoric treatment plant for black water and the other through the grey water treatment plant with this we come to an end to our presentation and these are some visualizations to help you understand our project better Here is a short video which we have created. Yeah, this is it from our side. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, team, for finishing the finishing it in time. Uh, Juris, I would like to uh, request you for the. So, um, what I saw the base part of your design are those two atriums which are there inside those classroom uh, blocks, but you could not use them properly because I believe. you could have covered them with some translucent material your vertical transportation or maybe your staircases they can uh, they can be there in the middle uh, at the end of the uh, atrium and then uh, you can actually enjoy them much better besides that you have shown those big windows you see the view the big windows uh, near the corridors so they will be disturbing the classrooms so in such case you could have easily put those uh, you know ventilators instead of those big windows adjacent to the corridors um i think besides that uh, the remaining circulation is very well worked out uh, the placement of the staircase the lifts you you could have used those uh, central atriums for that uh, i think uh, just suggestions can i can i go ahead yes sir yeah, yeah. <clears throat> actually uh, you have put in some effort on the uh, working on some of the actual uh, sustainability or you know some of the energy measures when you tell look at water and power consumption so it is in in many ways actually your project may be an engineer's delight uh, but actually when it comes to architecture i think somewhere it is a lost opportunity because when you're looking at um looking at the school or this institution which is a you know looking at the future uh the type of learning environments have vastly changed from what we learned and what you guys are learning and it's so, it's so dynamic you know it is far more you know people are being instructed in teams uh, you're having a lot of um, uh, what do you call hands on type of uh, learning uh, is happening your lot of visual aids are being given a lot of engagement with the outdoor environment uh, and with the outdoors when it comes to these learning environments and the spaces actually don't respond to that you know you have created this um, kind of a box here that you have just extruded uh, in three dimensions and and lot of you know there are a lot of opportunities to create spaces that respond to these uh, to these new environments uh, and you know breaking down the scale uh, for the uh, the smaller children making it more humane um, and then uh, creating their own you know uh, an, an environment where they feel comfortable um, so many uh, opportunities uh, are there 
to create uh, very nice and interesting spaces. And I think we can think about it um, rather than you know just having this extruded box, right? So that's that's what I would say. Shall I just go say something? Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, basically, as uh, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you have done a lot of work on the MEP part of it and the sustainability and energy modeling, uh, which is very nice. And you seem to have very good understanding of that. But architecturally, this, I feel, looks like any school in Noida. It could be Amity, it could be any school, you know. So uh, I think that's where it needs to be sort of thought through. And the central space is very, um, I would say, a devoid of life, devi devoid of vibrancy. Because if that is the heart of your uh, school, then the heart needs to be vibrant. It needs to be active. It needs to, everything ha needs to happen around that. While here, all your classes and all are backing it, you know. So uh, the movement and the corridors where a lot of interaction happens is all away from this. So I think somewhere there is a miss in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the central courtyard and its significance. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any views from Mahesh, sir? Uh, hello. Hi. Yes, yeah, sir. I think the is you know that uh, we don't uh, see in this college whatever they saying about the design by the architecture. Other than the facade, the window openings are too small for such a, such a glass to get the um, in, in in terms of fresh air as well as the daylight uh, for the area. Even that proportionate of uh, shading and orientation of the window need to be streamlined with the proper studies. They've done EPA and everything, but it's not correlated with EPA and sustainability with the system. And the cladding and the louvers, they're putting the sizes versus the uh, gap between the louvers need to be addressed, how much is uh, glare cut and how much radiated heat is reduced and direct heat reduced. So these all need to be addressed in the facade. And also the, the entire, uh, shading and orientation of the facade element and proportional the percentage of the glass versus opaque or spandrel or whatever areas need to be elaborated more in the presentation that will be given a more idea of such a buildings are taller about uh, more than six seven stories okay thank you sir any comments from them or any view? What did they did they done anything on this front? Yeah, Aman, would you like to answer? Yeah, so actually, what we like uh, we first took a window wall ratio as a full percentage and put it on the facade. But later we observed that uh, near that window, the useful daylight illuminance is not that much. Like the glare is too high on that just across the window like uh, half a meter or one meter from that window so we tried to break it down into small pieces in order to reduce that glare part so is so as to have more useful space inside the classroom and also to have ample daylight in but yeah we can actually look into the exact dimensions and all how the glasses are will be incorporated into that we will definitely look into it and also for all the other suggestions, we'll definitely try to incorporate yeah. further. Because uh, the inner elevation, the window shows some small aspect ratio is lesser compared to the full floor height and width of the between the two walls. And the, but you continuously running the shading devices, you know. So it will provide a lot of shades also, but uh, you may get a direct shading line inside the uh, spaces. So. It should be addressed precisely. Mm, yes, sir. we'll definitely look at yes, it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.
Uh, yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you Zura for the advice and feedback. I would request you to uh, please grade team five. And uh, now we will take 10 minutes break and assemble back at the portal for the next sessions and uh, remaining presentations. Uh, we will resume at uh, 4.50, uh, sorry, 3.50. Uh, thank you. Welcome to the world of AIS Windows. We offer a comprehensive product range in UPVC and aluminium windows and doors. They are also available in a range of customizable options. AIS Windows are designed with an engineered precision and can be used for both residential and commercial spaces. AIS Windows not only provides best-in-class products, it also enriches lifestyle through enhanced aesthetics along with offering varied solutions in acoustic comfort, privacy, safety and security as well as energy savings. The AIS Experience Centre is a first-of-its-kind experience centre in glass and windows industry. A unique place where you not only get to see but also feel and experience the solutions in glass, window and door systems. A visit to this centre helps you to make an informed decision for your space, be it residential or commercial. Experience Center is empowered with cutting-edge digital technology to aid easy understanding of our products and solutions with a personalized experience. A 3D holographic video in the brand chat room engrosses one into the world of AIS glass and window solutions. The design studio opens up experiential possibilities through the latest technology via augmented reality and virtual reality experience. Our AR app is one of its kind augmented reality experience in the fenestration industry. This unique app makes it easier for you to select the right doors and windows by allowing you to visualize the placement of our products in your space. An interactive design screen allows one to digitally visualize the different solutions glass offers and varied window types in UPVC and aluminium along with available accessories. Let's have a look at and understand more about the solutions that our products offer. Our mission is to transcend the norms and achieve excellence with all our glass products and solutions. Our entire manufacturing process is streamlined calibrated and perfected to the highest standards of quality. AIS Clear is a high quality clear glass that is characterized by high precision flatness and uniform thickness, ensuring perfect clarity of vision and a brilliant luster. It is available in variety of thicknesses and sizes. AIS tinted heat absorbing glass absorbs 30 to 45 percent of the sun's heat enabling greater comfort and enhanced aesthetics. It is available in a variety of colors, sizes and thicknesses. AIS Crystal is India's only branded frosted glass. It obscures the view while allowing light to pass through, making it ideal for privacy and aesthetic appeal. AIS Opal is India's leading energy efficient and heat reflective glass brand. It is available in a range of vibrant colors. AIS Opal's solar control properties make it the best choice for exterior glass and also for various aesthetic applications. Long lasting and economical, AIS Opal makes exteriors stylish and the interiors cool. 
AIS Opal Trends is a first of its kind and India's only patterned heat reflective glass glazing brand and is available in many contemporary patterns to make buildings look modern and stylish. Both AIS Opal and AIS Opal Trends are available in a wide range of stylish and exciting colors. So, whatever your design or need, you are sure to find a color that fits your requirements. AIS Sunshield is a high-performance solar control glass solution that provides the ultimate in cooling comfort. It is available in five magnificent shades, including our latest addition, Sunshield Royal Gold, the gold standard in heat reflective glass. AIS Sunshield Trends, a regal trend in heat reflective glass brings together the functional superiority of AIS heat reflective glass and the refreshing new aesthetics of patterned glass. It is available in a range of vibrant colors and exciting patterns. AIS EcoSense, the green standard in glass. The AIS EcoSense range of products provide the right blend of aesthetics and energy efficiency, daylight and energy saving, visual comfort and thermal control, technology and eco-sensitivity. AIS EcoSense is available in five different ranges Enhance, Exceed, Edge, Essence and Excel and all of them are available in a variety of shades. AIS Decor, a fresh and innovative glass product created especially for use in interiors. It is an environment-friendly solution that's easy to maintain and use. Available in a variety of vibrant shades. Get a better look at life with AIS Mirror, our environment-friendly one-way glass solution that's resistant to corrosion, long-lasting and distortion-free. Our range of glass solutions and products cater to every aspect of modern architecture. From exterior and interior glass products and solutions that add a sense of distinction to your building, this is an exciting period of growth for the Indian architectural industry. And being a huge part of this industry, we are doing our share to further this vision with our best-in-class glass products. A vision that will help you see more possibilities, see more innovation, see more perfection. See more with AIS, enabling wonders, inspiring all. Welcome to the world of AIS Windows. We offer a comprehensive product range in UPVC. Next team, which is from Indian Institute of uh, Technology, Rurki. The team, uh, team leader's name is Pranav Singhal, Avantika Vama, Harsh Chaudhary, Ritik Yadav. Teams, uh, just go and uh, turn on your camera and please share your screen. I'll let you know when to start. You may start. So hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Avantika and I'll be taking you through our design proposal for the AIS Design Olympiad. We call our project Carapace, which basically means a project, a protective envelope. And this was the basis for our design so as to provide a better and safer work environment for people. We will take you through our journey, starting from the project introduction and concluding at the final design outcomes. Our team consists of me, Avantika, Pradav, Harsh, and Ritik. We all are third-year architecture students from IIT Roorkee. The thing that unifies us as a team is that we all are passionate about creating socially, culturally, and environmentally sustainable spaces. When coupled with technology, we believe that architecture has the potential to have a constructive impact on the society. So our journey begins with getting familiar with green buildings. But why green buildings? 
commercial office spaces are known to consume a lot of electricity and a considerable amount of this energy goes into ensuring <coughs> occupant comfort well this comfort can also be ensured through sustainable means of providing adequate natural daylight ventilation and acoustic insulation so we focused on these parameters in our design approach we all have faced the pandemic and the changes it has brought in our work culture being in conversation with people who have faced both pre covid and covid scenario a general concern was to have a flexible workspace with a homely environment so we went for a hybrid approach Uh, to have a flexible workspace with a homely environment, uh, so the, the such type of uh, layout allows for team collaboration, more layer, uh, more light and air circulation, as well as privacy and fewer distractions. Our hybrid office model consists of formal spaces, informal spaces, and recreation, uh, recreational areas. Uh, now coming to our site, which is situated in Hisar, Haryana. analysis of the site made us draw some conclusions like the wind flows from southeast to northwest which helped in orienting our building the sun traces east to west via the south side being overhead in summer which helps us in determining the building orientation that is north facing the average temperature is around 27 <coughs> degrees celsius year long with the peak in may the site strengths include excellent rail and road connectivity being close to major highways and institutions and regularity in site contours so keeping the inferences from the swot and site analysis in mind we decided on the building form the cuboid here represents the building mass we evolved it into a circular form reflecting back heat and keeping the building naturally cool we further created a concentric interactive space in the middle which supports the courtyard cooling effect we made the form open from the north and south sides for air circulation the south opening a bit lesser than the north opening which makes the funnel effect possible due to pressure difference Finally, we gave a step profile to our building and shifted the blocks a bit backward for mutual shading. These are the passive control features that we incorporated in the design, namely courtyard effect, curved form, and funnel effect, as we explained earlier. A uh, staggered build form allows us to maximize the north facade, which is mutually shaded from the consecutive upper floor. We also use the earth passive cooling method, in which cool air will be circulated inside the building via a water medium present in the central plaza and passing it through a gravel base. In the columns, we have provided wind catchers. The air will enter from the top and will get distributed throughout the ceiling and will also translate across the floors via the columns. Uh, so these are the details that you can see in the uh, for the ceiling and the floor slabs. This is our proposed master plan. the planning is done to maintain the minimum interference for vehicles parking is planned in the basement to reduce the heat island effect along with it the central pond has been provided to utilize the funnel effect to stand against the summer heat and to cater to the fire safety exits and the services service roads are given along the periphery coming to the zoning for which our aim was to integrate different spaces which allow the users to work collaborate and relax and they get an environment which keeps them mentally well so this is the plot boundary uh, you can see here and uh, here is the vehicular circulation the blue zone is the space provided as a complete working space and the red zone shows the atrium which not only serves as a common meeting point but also gives a change of air to the user mind Uh, these are the drop off points and uh, on the right you can see the service core each core has been provided in such a way that the distance from the core to any point is not more than 25 to 30 meters and they are placed at the periphery in the east and west direction to cut the east and west sun reaching the office and this is the site plan which shows the connectivity with the roads and the basement plan in the design details you can see the area assigned uh, uh, to different floors of the complex An individual office contains private office, conference room, reception, lounge, toilet and service core, kitchen and dining space, and gaming area. And on the basis of uh, the space typology, the design is classified into two office modules. First module of this office consists of a working space, its own private eatery, gaming zone, and lounge. Uh, this module is available in three types: large, medium, and small, as shown in the exploded diagram. and the internal planning is done to keep the noise prone zones away from the working space and we all, uh, we have also provided dedicated calling chambers and a curved lobby connects these different blocks for interconnection 
Module 2 is meant to reduce the expense of the companies by providing two offices with a share, shared atri, gaming area, and the common lounge. Facades which face the high solar, solar radiations are used for utility and service, while facades which face the north use glass to let the diffused daylight enter the building. This is a typical floor plan which shows the circulation between two consecutive offices via lobby space, which is directly connected to the atrium lifts. Open green terraces are also provided on each floor to create a biophilic design so that the user feels close to the nature while working through glass walls, where we use AIS Clear Essence Plus Glass for high visual transmittance. For rooms that require extensive acoustic limitation, like the conference room, partially aged AI switch glass has been used with manually controlled transparency. And for spaces which require partial visual connection and privacy, strip partitions are provided and uh, cabinet part uh, partitions are given in spaces which require a broader sense of interconnection. Open working spaces encourage collaborative work along with buffer spaces for brainstorming sessions and gathering spaces at the junctions. Some of the basic services provided are gym and restaurant. And here we can see the plan of the gym on the first floor along with its visuals. In this slide, you can see the plan and visuals of the restaurant. So these amenities are placed on the first floor near the main entrance itself, so as to reduce the circulation. Uh, in this section, you can see the interconnection between the circulation space and the office area. And the eating and recreational spaces are adjacent to these spaces for informal interaction. Coming to the glass details, for the glass covering the atrium facade, 6mm double glass, double for protection from UV radiation, clear sparkle low E glass has been selected to reduce the direct invasion of the infrared radiation. And for the north direction and rooftop openings, clear essence plus glass has been used for high visual transmittance. And since it has higher SHGC value, it has been kept in north to reduce the heat content. And for the rest of the facade system, there are two layers of windows. The top layer consists of DRF that directs the sunlight to the roof, which allows a deeper penetration of diffused daylight inside the building. And the bottom ones are covered with the retractable wall louvers to avoid the wall surface to have the direct radiation. And the materials for the roof and wall facade have, has been mentioned in the illustrations given, which is uh, adjacent to the door and window schedule. We also kept sustainability involved in various aspects of the design, like for the facade we have used terracotta. Uh, electrical car parking and charging has been provided and low VOC paints are used. Deciduous trees are placed where the facade profile is open to cut the summer sun and let the winter sun enter the place. And overall the design is biophilic and promotes well-being. The north facade is unique as well as a, as well as it has a uh, a different and interesting profile with a common visual aesthetic that is the use of glass near the working space. You have one minute left. And here we can see the deciduous trees as well. The south and west side have two types of facade, one lured with fenestration beneath and other a concrete facade which covers the service and utility area. Central landscaping has radial geometry which creates a junction for informal interaction and where the air which comes from the south gets cooled down by the water body. The terrace space is used to create additional open area with the luxurious amenities for business meetings or for relaxing on weekends. The terracotta jali functions as an insulation layer and which does not allow the heat to enter the building. And uh, the entire premises is designed keeping in mind uh, the accessibility for all. And here is another visual for our design and uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, team. Thank you for making the presentation and presenting here. And thank you for the all the hard work that you have done for preparing it. Now requesting jury member to come and share your feedback and give the comments to the sprints. Over to you, jury members. May I start? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So generally the office uh, interiors are basically based, uh, they're based on rectangular grid or square grids. Uh, in a base shape form, it is very difficult to design an office interior unless you make it absolutely informal office. So uh, why you have selected this wave shape form, uh, a circular form, which is aesthetically very good, but is not very functional when it comes to office design. This is my first question. Uh, and the second is when you have created those good terrace areas on top and you have put those uh, 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 interactive spaces, but these terraces are divided because of uh, those height difference and there is no connectivity as such. So uh, have you thought on that? 
Um, so first of all, uh, we have kept building a circular because of the uh, like we wanted to have all the natural elements uh, and to use them and exploit them in a very good way, uh, not to have uh, um, like a very fuzzy design where uh, people cannot work comfortably. We wanted uh, a thermal uh, or comfort for everyone working and uh, as we stated the hybrid office design uh, after covid scenario we uh, interviewed people and they said uh, a flexibility is needed in office designs uh, that's why we chose a uh, state that not only uh, rectangles but other forms circular can also be used which are very playful and which uh, create a biophilic design and it generates a well-being for the employees who are working there uh, i'll i'll interrupt you here actually you are talking about flexibility but actually way shape design kills the flexibility in the interiors particularly the office interiors so all other reasonings may not work for that the biophilic design or uh, even uh, your heat simulations they will not work for it because even the rectangular building can be a very well uh, designed envelope you know so the reason why we selected this kind of form uh, in the beginning itself for uh, office premises that is what is my question is so uh, in the beginning uh, the concern was uh, to create a thermally uh, insulated building so that we could avoid the uh, south facade and as you have seen the building has uh, maximized the north facade so our intent was to create uh, spaces where we could easily give glass so uh, people can have interaction with the outer spaces the step terraces are uh, given in that uh, sequence because um, a one entire terrace would not be uh, used in a, uh, a much more efficient way but uh, smaller terraces could be used by particular offices or uh, different people if it because it is nearby to their working desk so in that way we thought that stepped uh, terraces would be beneficial and it also helps us for staggered living not really very convincing because even uh, a single uh, uh, terrace would have been much better uh, you know used uh, you can have partition uh, landscape partition in between but anyway uh, what it is thank you uh, i just wanted to say that uh, i like the way you started off in terms of breaking the form and uh, creating the openings and all but um, as uh, said earlier the uh, an office layout what you have shown is very incongruous with the building form so either you should not go into it right now because it's not uh, synchronized at all um and also some of your facade energy modeling uh is or the facade energy concepts are from one particular angle or one particular segment but since your building is circular uh, that segment keeps changing so i don't know how it works in a circular building if it was a rectangular building yes one whole side would have the same uh, you know impact so that's my uh, second comment and of course as i said that uh, in a building in a commercial building in an office floor uh, the way which is what we call a shell and core building uh the design of the core is very cr crucial because it determines how efficient your floor plate is uh i don't know whether that aspect is holding good in this design can i uh, are you done uh, sonal yes okay oh, thank you can i uh, go ahead yes sir <clears throat> now i uh, see one important thing is uh, as architects and also the, we we should go beyond just making doing uh, lip service as i should say it see please understand that in this kind of a circular facade actually if you look at it the longer side of the sa site is actually east west am i right in understanding that uh the sir yeah. site is approximately a uh, square yeah it is square but but if you look at the two sides of the curves they are actually facing east west right 
would i would i be correct in understanding that oh yes sir so what actually is happening is that you have taken this design and you have actually exposed the longer sides of your building to east and west now no problem it's not that every building has to be north south there's no cardinal rule like that you could still come up with a good design if you but when you have a design like that with the stepped uh terraces and so on and then you say that you know building is going to mutually shade uh one another or the blocks are going to shade one another i am personally not convinced i would have expected that if you're going to do that you would have a very clear daylight uh analysis a shadow analysis done especially because of the form that you have uh, conceptualized right because i am it it would appear to me that really there is no there is not much of shading that is happening right <clears throat> because of the shape of the building and the sun path there is every chance that almost for a major part of the day all of your terraces will actually have sunlight so it is very important that when you take on a challenging uh, uh task or a challenging form that you back it up with sufficient analysis or studies right uh, second is again to take that the uh, idea further you know you talked about the columns uh, being able to channel wind and so on again if that is going to happen you know in traditional architecture you used to have these wind towers and and you know that to channel wind i don't again here again it's important that we go beyond lip service right what would be the actual size of that column if it is going to really harness wind and what impact will that size of the column have in the interior space and how efficient will the interior space be or will you have like you know a couple of column i mean one or two columns only in each office space so on and so forth so i would i would suggest that if you look at one concept maybe you go a little bit deeper into that concept so that it is uh it is validated right otherwise you're just skimming the surface and then coming up with all of these nice terminologies and nice uh, things you know things that are nice to hear but actually they will not work what about rain wa rain water if you're going to have this channeling the wind from the column is it going to be elevated are you going to have some kind of a ra uh, rain protection i'm not going to get into the details i'm just going to assume that the engineering we can solve but at a very fundament at from a first principles point of view it's important that when you say something you have uh you demonstrate that you can validate that right so please uh, do not uh, please take this as a, a in a constructive way uh like i i i echo uh, what carl said some time back it's a great effort and a lot of courage to put your designs out there and uh, you know we do it with our customers uh, we do it when we participate in competitions we know what it is like a lot of energy is put in so please do not uh, just take what i say in a constructive way Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, feedback. Now, requesting jury members to give their marks and evaluate the team. I think I have uh, one comment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I sir. think basically what uh, the team has done is, if you really ask my opinion, there it's a fine balance between sustainability and architecture. Where the architecture doesn't overpower the sustainability, nor the sustainability doesn't overpower the architecture. Okay, he has taken a circular form. i mean why do we always have to think about a rectangular form for an office space i mean this is only an exploration by the team so i don't see anything wrong with that one i think like another jury member said maybe more effort should have been put into but then you also have restri restrictions because you study in a college and you have limited time and all that but overall i think i like your exploration thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank thank you sir thank you for your feedback now i am requesting a, a, another jury member architect sonali bhagwati the president of dp and the co-founder of spazio design one of the leading women in the field of archi architecture she is the proud alumna of cpt ahmedabad and a member of delhi urban arts commission she has received numerous prestigious awards such as architect of the year award by z business in 2008 and 12 the design award uh, the design award in 2015 and the leadership award in 2015 by ce worldwide we honor to have you on board map over to you
Thank you. Thank you, AIS, for this very, very nice effort uh, in bringing the uh, professional community and the student groups together. Uh, I think these kind of efforts are very beneficial to both the students as well as us, because uh, according to me, learning is a continuing process. I consider myself a student. And I think uh, the day you stop learning, the day you will, that is the day you will stop growing. And that's not something that anyone should be doing. So no matter how many years of practice you have behind you, no matter how many years of experience you have behind you, uh, there is always something to learn from everyone. And I think today's younger generation has a lot to teach us, uh, uh, you know, a different way of thinking, um, different exploration into uh, technology. And I think it's very, very beneficial and very invigorating. So thank you all. Thank you all the students for putting in this huge effort. We may sound critical, but believe me, it's an effort that I really commend and I appreciate. Um, thank you I so just, much, ma'am. Okay, I just feel that, uh, um, you know, for us architects, uh, our drawing is our language. Uh, we don't need to be speaking. We need to be speaking through our drawings, through our design. Everything that's in your mind needs to come out through your drawings and your presentation. And that is why I feel that the strength in creating the right drawings and the right presentations is very, very important. I think that's where sometimes uh, there is a disconnect between a thought process and um, what you present as a drawing. And I think all the schools and all the students, I feel, need to focus and concentrate a lot more on that. Uh, another thing which I would like to tell all the students is that we need to think in a multi-directional manner. Uh, it's no longer a time of thinking in one way and doing one thing. Today, every project, everything that we do has numerous different aspects. And unless we think in uh, at, at different planes and in different directions at the same time, uh, I don't think we are going to do justice to what we are doing. Uh, the last thing that I'd like to really talk about is that, uh, which I think one of the earlier jury members also said, that uh, today what we lack a lot is design in our public realm. And we as designers and architects uh, need to really come out of our comfortable domains. We all design buildings, we all design beautiful environments, which are all confined within smaller pockets. But the area which is between those pockets is what I call the no man's land, which is a public realm. And the experience of any city is always judged by its pedestrian experience. And our pedestrian experience in any Indian city or any Indian urban environment it really is wanting. And I think as architects, we need to come out and I think we need to join hands with the competent uh, agencies, uh, the governmental uh, organizations, and try and see what we can do to somehow bring order into this chaotic urban realm that we have. I think we as designers uh, need to put come forward and use design as a tool to create order and bring about behavioral changes at an urban level. So while all this, that all the effort that we put in at a private, uh, at a private domain level needs to come out and extend into the public realm. And this is one of the most important things. We did some extensive studies on Shah Jahanabad and how to make that into a place where you and I would like to walk. Today, why do our old beautiful heritage cities are becoming defunct, they're becoming disjointed, dysfunctional? Uh, why don't we want to go there? We need to start picking up all the positives over there and let's see how every solution has to be different. But we can try and examine at a small scale 
Look at your own community. Look at your own environment where you live, where you work, where you go to school and see what you can do. Small changes can go a long way in creating a nice, a harmonious pedestrian environment. And that's what I would really want all the architects, all the budding architects to start thinking about. Um, so I think what would be nice is to look at pilot projects, even as a part of your school projects, start picking up small projects like this, which are around you, spaces and places that you know well, and start making them into pilot projects. And then we can look at pushing them into uh, realizing them in small ways and making difference, uh, a small difference, which can go a long way. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this wonderful speech. And uh, I'm sure the students will benefit a lot from your words in their careers and their respective fields of study. Uh, I'm delighted the knowledge and your expertise you have shared. Uh, all of us are overwhelmed uh, hearing your words. Uh, now, I would like the next team to come forth and present their uh, work. The next team is from SJB School of Architecture and Planning, Bhavesh MB, Sahan Shri AG, and Yukta Owar. Team, you can uh, share your screens and switch on your cameras. Good evening. This is Bhavesh. Yes, you may start. Uh, good evening, this is Bhavesh and we are a team of four from SGB School of Architecture of Law. and the project is Echo Work, Echo Working Space. The project mainly speaks about sustaining humanities and creating a sustainable community workspace. The site of 5.25 acres is located in the industrial district of Mysore, Karnataka at a pleasant tropical savanna climate. The design approaches used by the team were the the preparatory work of the program, the pre-design and the conceptual design development, the suitable design solutions, and the conclusion through the final report. The design goals were to achieve a balance between the form and function, a proper massing and orientation to impact the energy consumption, to design a modular system which can be used adaptively, low operational costs or increment, incremental costs, the potential re reuse of resources such as the zero waste discharge on site, and creating a positive environment in the surrounding within. The site is located in the industrial district of Mysore and it has the hard edge, which is the high speed traffic with large scale roads, which define the boundary of the whole district, which is the outer ring road of Mysore. And the site is also surrounded mostly by scattered industrial and dense residential areas. Next. The, mac the macro level site analysis of the major landmarks. So it basically shows the graphical representation of all the sensory factors that affect the site, such as the strategic location of the site as it is at a high human density area and the high traffic roads towards the ring road. And also the opportunities to frame the view of the lake as it's access into the whole site and the industrial region around. The climatic analysis shows where we have considered the sun path of the summer and the winter solstice periods. And the block also shows the areas most affected by the sun and its orientation. The site has a, a high temperature of around 34 degrees in the warmest months of April and the coolest going to 15 degrees in December. And it also shows the prevailing winds, which are the harsh winds from the west and the southwest, which are also followed by northeast and east cool winds into the site. The massing strategies of these spaces are designed in such a way that the central open air space is shaded by the building during the lunch hour, where it's most substantially used in the day. And the shorter sides of the facades face the harsh sun or the southwest. The building also achieves a north-south orientation for the longer facades. The massing also blocks the harsh winds from the north, northeast, not sorry, the southwest. And the water body also provides a cooler microclimate with the help of the prevailing northeast winds into the site. The sunlight and the radiation analysis shows the sun angles at various times of the day, which helps the shading design of the spaces. And the solar radiations shows the parts of the buildings that are exposed and the voids that create cooler profiles on the building. The area statements 
shows us the FAR and the permissible area limits, such as the programs restricting to the ground floor are open to public, and the first floor and the second floor being semi-private and private spaces. And the total number of occupants for this program are 600. The design concept is biophilia, which is the innate human instinct to connect with nature. As of today, buildings cannot be enclosed in a box and buildings which nature is an urgent need in today's community. So we are using growth, which is growing with the flow. So bringing in a modular building that can grow out of itself with the nature is the main design intention. Oh, coming to the site plan. Uh, the number one shows the main entrance to the site. So as soon as we enter the site, we have the surface parking and the drop off area, which uh, leads to the main entrance to the building. Uh, the road continues to the basement parking. So we have an open uh, air theater in the center and a green roof. Uh, we have provided a, a transformer yard and a DG room towards the uh, main road, as well as the services towards the backside of the uh, rear end of the site. Uh, this is the exploded view. So the ground floor has the main uh, public spaces like the entrance lobby, cafeteria spaces, office modules and training modules. The first floor is semi-private and it has a staggered connectivity among office modules. Uh, the second floor is for completely private uh, office modules. So this is the ground floor. So as soon as we enter the ground floor, we have the main reception area which further breaks out into uh, office modules. Uh, we also have the uh, meeting and conference rooms and the leisure room in the ground floor. Uh, the first floor plan. So the first floor is semi-private spaces. That is uh, basically the office modules, the cafeteria space, as well as the library. Uh, the second floor plan con consists of completely private individual office modules uh, with a triple height courtyard. We have also provided voids and terraces in between so that there's a constant airflow and uh, all the spaces are well lit throughout. Uh, coming to the basement plan, uh, we have provided a total uh, car parking of 155 numbers and a two -wheeler, uh, 50 numbers of two wheelers and 20% of parking for electrical and green vehicles. Uh, these are the sections. Uh, so this section is cut through uh, the library and meeting spaces, the central courtyard and working modules from left to right. Uh, this is another section cut from the central courtyard, the working modules, other uh, reception spaces, uh, and also the rest of the working modules. We can see how we have utilized the uh, triple height uh, courtyards in the section. Uh, this, these are the northeast facing elevations and the northwest facing elevational views. So, uh, how we have incorporated biophilia in our design is uh, due to uh, the green pockets, the open air amphitheater, the green walkway, private garden, and well lit corridors for each module. It also says that uh, office environments incorporating natural elements provides more productivity while working. So the wellness parameters that we have considered, multiple green terraces and courtyards that we have placed uh, along the direction of the wind flow in order to maintain uh, good indoor air quality and constant airflow throughout the building. So the applications of glass in the exterior, we have used AIS EcoSense glass, which has low E values and uh, energy efficient and has high performance. The interior AIS uh, clear glass partitions, which can also be used during uh, whenever there's privacy requ required. The shading lures. So as a result uh, of the shading lures, these are adjustable and can be adjusted during the overcast days. So based on this, uh, it's the most effective way to reduce air conditioning loads. So these are the uh, door window schedules. So the material that we've used is CLT, that is cross laminate timber. It, uh, the strength is similar to concrete, but the amount of uh, positivity it offers to the environment uh, and also the uh, workability. So it provides similar strength to concrete and it's also eco-friendly and sustainable. It is also fire resistant. Uh, so one step forward uh, to achieve net zero. Uh, so we have calculated the energy consumption and the water consumption. The total energy that we will be uh, generating on site is 4,65,000 uh, kilowatt hours annually. And the amount of total water uh, collected with rainwater harvesting is 22,17,600 liter per year. Uh, we have a small video.
And that was the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, team, for taking us through your presentation. Uh, now I'd like to ask our jury to put forward any questions or comments they have for the team. I have a question. Thank you for your presentation, first of all. My question is, um, between the lake and uh, the building, is there a road or have you made the road? because I see a road and parking. So is there a road that actually cuts the side away from the water? Uh, yes, no, a, there's a main road uh, separating the lake and the uh, site. So there's also a promenade, uh, which is only for uh, pedestrians. Yeah, there's, there are two separate pathways there. So the site is disconnected from the lake by a road? Yes, the site is away from, there's a main road separating the site and the uh, okay. lake. So uh, my question is that, uh, is there a reason why you put parking on the lake side? You know, I can see some open parking, uh, which is on the lake side, because I would think that you could look at all public areas and gardens that extend up to the road, perhaps, and form like an edge with the road, uh, which almost makes it uh, very, very open. So you put so a the main reason... parking uh, away, uh, you know, which is sort of, cutting off um, from the lake area. You know, it makes it very hard. That was my question one. And my question two is that your main plaza, which I think is nice to, first of all, open up the building in a V form because it really exploits also the views from the lake, which I assume there is a view because you have not talked about the lake or its response to the lake at all. But I assume that the opening up of the V is because of that. And uh, but the plaza that you have in the middle is again very hard uh, with just a few like some trees here and there. There is, uh, is, is that the because you see, we have a very sunny weather and shaded areas are extremely important for outdoor usage. Uh, you can't really spend too much time in the sun. So is there any thought to that? Um, so like uh, starting with the parking, uh, so the main purpose of placing the surface parking along the main road was mainly to cut down the noise, the, the factors affecting the main common areas within the site. And placing the building a little bit into the site is also mainly to create a higher level of a platform, which creates a better focal point, like from the office modules for the green terraces that are present along the whole facade. At a higher level, it creates a better focal point towards the lake. And about the microclimate, the whole water body helps the, the whole surrounding and the microclimate as the prevailing north winds and the northeast winds, they carry forward, they carry forward, like the cooler winds prevail into the wind. So it's basically like welcoming that and blocking the harsh winds that are from the southwest and the west region. But you need shaded areas, you know, it's really important for outdoors because we don't have the European plaza climate. Oh, we have placed the building in such a way like uh, the shortest side is facing the west. So uh, the building is oriented in such a way that uh, during 12 or uh, 1 p.m., uh, the building casts a shadow uh, in the main central open air theater. So uh, that's exactly why we have uh, placed it in the center. Uh, we have even done the radiation analysis to check how much uh, area is covered. The shadow falls, yeah on the site, the main open air theater. The lunch hour at being the 1, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. time break is when the shadow is being ca casted over the particular region. So taking that into consideration, that kind of creates like a, a cooler area when the users are most probably going to be on the outside. Apart from that, it's going to be the later evenings, which is going to be completely shaded because of the other site, site elements.
thank you ma'am thank you team uh, any more questions or comments from the other jurors okay requesting the jurors to please register their scores for the team the next team we have is from mark institute of design and architecture sharon jose and ananti team you can uh, switch on your cameras and share your screen and you may start um can we start yeah you may start a very pleasant evening to one and all present here we are delighted to present our work on a residential school for students with autism which is located in madurai project i3 aims to create a sustainable living environment for the young learners i am sharon jose jaffe from tip school of architecture coimbatore My teammates are Grace Trivina and Anandi Thangaraj from Midas Chengalpattu. Before getting into the project, we'd like to talk about the project. Every student can learn just not on the same day or the same way. I3 aims to create a safer and healthier ambience for the children to learn and grow together while considering both their physical and mental state. The school cater a sustainable and highly flexible environment. Education is vital to every human being despite their similarities. autism is an increasing disorder and yet people are not aware of them or how to deal with their conditions we aim to bring light to the better understanding and recognition of these youngsters autism spectrum disorder is a development disorder that affects a person's communication and behavior asd can be a lifelong disorder but treatments and services can help with a person's symptoms some of their behavioral patterns include inappropriate laughing difficulty in expressing themselves being alone echoing words or phrases no sense of danger apparent insensitivity to pain and difficulty to socially interact with each other before blindly entering into the project we looked upon some case studies to help us understand the project better disha special school and autism center in gujarat is one of them this school has given more importance to the space distribution and organization for all necessary functional areas like classrooms sensory and transition zones some of the necessary spaces in an autistic school include classrooms transition zones soft landscapes therapy and sensory rooms to help with their mood swings there are certain factors to consider while designing the environment some of which are creating a serene environment providing good level of natural lighting acoustics and ventilation use of eco friendly materials quiet rooms with sensory control no sharp edges for safety and providing break spaces coming to our site our site is located in madurai also known as the temple city madurai experiences a tropical savanna climate with an average rainfall of 8576 mm per annum one of the important site selection criteria for an autistic school is the location of community services nearby there are many hospitals religious centers and schools nearby making the site an ideal place for this development there are about 1000 autistic children in madurai but there are lack of schools to educate them in 2015 a, a rally took place which concentrated on bringing awareness on autism in response to this rally we decided to raise awareness on autism children and their education by providing a facility in madurai Inyang is the concept behind which I three was developed. Inyang represents balance. The site is divided into learning zone and the activity zone, thus creating a balance between the knowledge and entertainment. These spaces are connected by the transition zones by sensory garden and the soft landscapes. For the concept, we developed the zoning and we proceeded with our design. And these are the initial sketches we came up with, and they show our ideas on the project. Our site area is thirty-five thousand square meter, and the total ground coverage is thirty percentage. The main access road is eighty-eight meter wide, and there are four entrances. There are thirteen bike parkings, ten car parkings, and six bus parkings. This is an aerial shot of a project. So every block has a central courtyard which acts as a break space. They have a tree and a seating space to help the children relax during their breaks, and they also have a microclimate in the hot environment. The lime green in the is the admin block. The pink area is the classroom block. The purple shows the activity block. The violet shows the dormitories. Brown indicates the caretaker block. Yellow shows the play areas. Gray shows the pathways. Light green shows the garden areas, and blue shows the water bodies. 
There are two entries in the site. Security cabins are placed near the entrances. One entry for the vehicles, another for the school buses. So there are two drop-off zones. The people coming from the vehicular drop-off zones enter the campus through the admin block, while children entering from the bus drop-off enter their classes around the sensory garden. The sensory garden and the central play area are the main transition zones in the campus, and the site services happen in the bottom left corner of the site. The image shows the bus drop off. We have created a colorful and welcoming entrance, uh, entrance for the youngsters by creating pergolas and soft landscapes in the area. The admin block has rooms for chairman, principal, HOD, along with the office spaces and record rooms. This space has central courtyard with the seating spaces. The block is very well light, which has semi, semi glass facades and skylights. The heat strength and laminated glass or AIS value glass are used in the semi glass facades. It is highly secure and laminated unit, which combines aesthetic strength and stability. The other materials are terracotta roof slabs and floors, exposed brick walls and glass doors and windows. Another notable material is the provision of transparent photovoltaic glass panels in the roof. They help to generate uh, solar energy and lighting to the room, thus making the block sustainable. These panels are also available in brilliant colors. The picture covers the entrance of the admin block, its central courtyard and its surroundings. The next image shows the view of the person entering the admin block. You can see the central courtyard and the waiting spaces. We have provided glass doors to make sure the working members keep note on the people entering the campus. The classrooms are highly flexible as they can be converted according to the usage of the space. The rooms are designed in such a way that two or more units can be clubbed and used in a single space and the rooms are separating by the partition walls. It is made by the glass and fiber board. Children can either draw on these boards or pin their artworks into the panels, which makes the space even more flexible is the provision of modular furniture, which can be used as a chair, table, storage unit according to the usage of space. The classrooms open to the garden spaces to help the children with their mood swings. The block is exposed brick structure. The notable element in the classrooms are uniquely designed doors. The doors are modified lures, which has central rotating rod, which resembles a rotating door. These doors are to protect the children from harsh sunlight while emitting brilliant colors. For this, we are using AIS switch glass, a smart glass solution. These glasses have power to control the transparency of the glass with a clip or click of a button. And they block UV rays and activate, uh, activate in less than 10 microseconds and consume less energy. They are also available in different colors and the partition walls are also made of AIS tinted glass and fiber panels. This image shows the view of classroom block from the central play area. The image covers a soft landscape and showing the tree houses. The caretaker block. The caretaker block is located in the center so that they can monitor the children all the time. And the block has rooms for janitors, caretakers, teaching members. And this image shows the view of the classroom from the central play area. You can also see the tree house in one of the green spaces. And the image shows the aerial shot of the caretaker block and the view of the caretaker block from the central play area. The activity zone is the place where dance, music, and art takes place. They have central bamboo bundle with rope ties and central uh, bamboo bracings with steel tension rings. They have open sand play area near, the, uh, near them with swings, seesaws, and slides to entertain the children. The notable feature in this block is the modified walls. These walls have punctures at different levels and positions to create a more exciting and challenging way for children to enter. The youngsters can jump walk, climb, or even crawl their way inside these spaces. We have also provided AIS tinted glass in the punctures to make the wall more interesting. This is the view of the activity zone from the central play area. There are shallow water bodies between the activity zones, which have small fishes and water plants to bring a sense of calm in the children. The dormitory is placed in the bottom left corner of the site between the activity zone and the classroom block. This block has small play areas with three houses next to it. There are a total of 11 rooms and a maximum of 46 children. The block has central ramp around the central tree, which leads to the first floor and the terrace. This image shows the entrance to the dormitory. The shot also covers the classroom block. The kitchen and the dining are placed adjacent to the dormitory. They have both semi-open and open dining. The area is about 3,340 I mean, square meters and can hold up to 120 children. The sensory room or quiet room or space is designed for autistic children to help them with their mood swings. The space is designed to aid a person with their communication coordination, self-organization, and sensory management. They help create a safe space from the overstimulation. The notable feature in the sensory rooms are the uniquely designed walls. Kim, you have a minute left. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, these walls are designed to help the children explore their senses in a controlled environment. These walls are punctured, uh, with, which has different features like uh, optic, optic lights, texture walls, green walls to help them. They also have hammocks, water beds, beanbag chairs, soft toys, scented candles, etc. The sensory garden is a, a place which has a collection of uh, many aromatic plants and strongly scented plants. They also have deliciously scented herbs, which are multi-sensory. They help provide a sensory uh, environment where the person is surrounded by pleasant sensations like soft lights, relaxing aroma, calm music, and tactile experiences. This image shows the view from the sensory garden overlooking the classroom blocks. This shot shows the view of a person entering uh, entering the caretaker's block from the sensory garden. Plants provide a sense of psychological comfort and emotional balance in people. I3 has many soft, uh, soft landscapes and water bodies to maintain its environment. This shows the gardening space behind the classroom block. This image shows both the vehicular uh, drop-off zone and the bus drop-off zone. This also shows the sensory garden, the admin block, and the classroom spaces. Last but not the least, we have an image covering the entire campus. Thank you so much for the opportunity and your patience. Thank you, Grace, Anandi, and Sharon for the presentation. Uh, over to our jury for any questions and comments they have for the team. Yeah. Uh, is the light sufficient inside the classrooms? Yes, sir. We have provided us, uh, since it's a hot and dry climate, we have provided small punctures above the lintel level to uh, achieve the uh, achieve maximum ventilation, sir. But the bigger side of, uh, side of the classroom is completely uh, dead wall, right? Yes, sir. We have uh, uh, wind openings on only two sides of the classroom, sir. Both other sides are uh, closed. Uh, because the length is... Uh, yes, uh, on, the, on the slide, can you show me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So as you can see here, we have the glass yeah, doors and it can be opened, sir. Yeah. They can be like open during uh, when the classes are happening. And here uh, at these sites, we have uh, like openings, sir, above the lintel level to achieve a uh, cooling, sir. It is not visible in the uh, perspective, at least. Okay, it's there in the section. Yes, sir. Any any uh, particular purpose why you kept it uh, at the ventilator level and not at the normal window level? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I hope uh, it's because of the stack. It's to achieve the stack effect, sir. So as you know, it's a hot climate, so there are hot air around. So hot air uh, tends to like uh, go up, up upwards, sir. It uh, tends to go up. So we have provided openings only on those levels. So, that is for the ventilator, but the, these windows are uh, they have got overhangs, so there will be hardly any light. Uh, coming inside the room and at the lower level, uh, the light will not penetrate. So we have also provided many skylights in the roof, sir. I'm pretty sure uh, the light will be sufficient. Could I, uh, could I ask a few questions? Awesome. Sure. Yeah. All, okay. Uh, Actually, I, I do appreciate the, the design um, problem that you have taken up for the autistic children. And uh, sometimes the differently abled uh, uh, members of a society also need to have equal opportunity. So it's, it's, it's great that you are thinking about that. The warmth and the scale of the project also is, is quite you know, inviting. Uh, for especially these uh, children. Uh, <clears throat> I do feel that we, you could have, you know, possibly explored um, some in terms of the actual layout and the form, uh, a certain variation, if you can call it that, because not just the form of the buildings, but also literally the dimensions of the building of each of those blocks is almost identical, whether it be a cafeteria, whether it be a, a caretaker, whether it be the classroom, whether it be 
any of the uh, administrative block it's almost the same radius i mean give or take that is positioned on the site and it's as if the functions are uh, you know uh, pushed into that uh, into into that circular form see i have no issue with uh, the geometry of it at all what i do feel is that it is almost the, it is almost the same language into which the functions are accommodated and if so if that is the case then you know the internal arrangement can also respond to that i mean but here we are taking a more rectilinear planning say of the caretaker or of the doms and then fitting it within a circular form right so i feel that you could have possibly thought about that a little bit more the second the third point uh, is <clears throat> as far as autistic children are concerned is there anything different see essentially in a school the classroom is the unit is is essentially the the fundamental unit in which they going to spend a considerable amount of time so how does that unit or that fundamental the, the starting point respond to the needs of the autistic children of course you're creating a sensory garden you're creating uh, a nice water body and uh, the, some of these walls have uh, you know different experiences for them calming etc but can that those experiences be integrated within that unit itself and how does that uh, classroom respond to the different needs of the autistic children i think that is some is another point that i feel you can you can actually incorporate or go into a little more depth yes sir thank you sir hi thank you sir um i think um, uh, you know it's it's a nice scale and i like the way uh, it's very green it gives you that a uh, right sort of a ambiance um however i feel that your landscape besides all the units being identical which is also a concern uh, your landscape is very rigid you know it's almost as if you don't want to deviate from the geometry uh, with those paths sort of defining uh, you couldn't uh, you didn't want to look at something a little bit more organic something a little sort of more fluid uh, not so regimented yes ma'am we wanted to make sure that the entire design is in a looped format so that it will be easy for the children to go to their destined uh, zone so that's that's one of the main reasons we we have given circular uh, landscapes and sensory gardens thank you thank you ma'am so uh, do we have any more questions i have just one small question sure Okay. So again, uh, I mean, like everybody is talking about the forms, and uh, everything is of the same size and all that. So my question to the uh, to you is that is Grace, I, I, would the autism children get confused because everything is the same actually? I mean, I mean, would they because there is nothing to direct them? Everything looks the same. sir they can easily identify the different blocks with the materials used as you can see the uh, admin block is made of brick work and the activity zones they are made of bamboo so i think they will be easily able to identify with the usage of material and the uh, overall appearance of the block okay okay thank you sir thank you group a thank you jury panel you, i hope you all have graded the group Uh, thanks karima uh, so uh, now we would like to welcome architect paul moses director of design and uh, project at rsp bangalore he is an architect with uh, 30 years of extensive indian and international work experience in the field of design construction documentation and post contract project management of a wide range of uh, project his specialization is in urban housing from the university of oregon usa He is registered with the Council of Architect in India as well as International Associate uh, with the American Institute of Architect. I cordially invite you, sir, uh, to address our audience uh, with your speech. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Um, why do architecture students work so hard? Why do architects work so hard? It is the motivation to do the best we can. 
a project for us, architects and architecture students is never complete. There is always more to do. A little improvement in the plan, a little improvement in the facade, improvement in the rendering and Photoshop and the list goes on. And as an architect, you could always revise, rethink, look at it from another perspective and it never ends. And why do we do this? We do this because it is our motivation to make the project as best as it could be. It is such an obsession, obsession that even if the fee is low and the client doesn't pay, we still do it. It is making your imagination tangible. How many professions have this unique characteristic where your imagination is made tangible? And when you start practicing as an architect, the high and the euphoria you get while watching a building built exactly the way you have designed it, there is nothing like that. Money cannot buy that kind of satisfaction. And as students who are embarking to this profession, there are three points I would like to highlight. The first one is think out of the box. What is thinking out of the box? It can be defined as lateral thinking, thinking differently, thinking unconventionally, or looking at things from a new perspective. Question conventionalism, always question conventionalism. Don't do what everybody does. And if you get a design problem, always try to break it into two. One is a conventional solution and what is an out-of-the-box solution. And many times you will find that, that an out-of-the-box solu solution gives you more unique architectural opportunities, spaces to solve problems. So always question conventionalism. Many architects have done this even before the terminology think outside the box became popular. And one of the architects I can think without hesitation is Charles Correa. If you look at, if you go back to the library and look at his projects, like for example, Kanjanjanga Apartments in Mumbai, or the city center in Salt Lake City, Kolkata, or the Siddhade de Goa project in Goa. In all these projects, architect Charles Courier thought out of the box and Christian conventionalism. So this is my first point. My second point is sustainability is now. Uh, we need to address carbon emissions from buildings and construction, which constitute about 40% of global carbon emissions. And I, can, and, and I can keep on going on about these statistics. But uh, achieving zero emissions from new construction will require energy efficient buildings that does not use on-site fossil fuels and are 100% powered by on-site or off-site renewable energy. As young architects who are about to enter this profession, please do not lose sight of these statistics. It is also commendable that companies such as AAS is playing a huge part as a corporate social responsibility and encouraging students to address this problem. And my last advice is please do not give up, never give up. I know that many students after putting a lot of long hours, this apart from your regular college schedule, you must be exhausted physically and mentally. And as per every competition, there will always be winners and runners up. Even today, in our practice, you can ask our colleagues also. There are many projects which we win today. There are many projects which we lose tomorrow. But we just take it on a stride and we just move on. Steve Jobs, the great innovator, says, if I try my best and fail well, I have tried my best. And again, if I try my best and fail well, I have tried my best. And all of you winners and runners-up, you all have tried your best. And that is what counts at the end of the day. It has been a privilege to be a jury member of this competition. Thank you, AAS, and thank you, students. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for your enlightening words that inspired not only the students, but I'm sure so many people present here today. Now I would like to invite our uh, ninth team for the day. Uh, the team from National Institute of Technology, Patna, NIT Patna, Pratap, Yogesh and uh, Nijas. Yes, sir. Yeah, if you can put on uh, your presentation on the screen. Yes. You can put that on the uh, full screen mode. Yeah, you can, yes, you can. So here is our design. So very a good, a very good afternoon to sir and ma'am. So next slide. So this is Pratap Singh and Nijas, my teammate and Yogesh. So we are from National Institute of Technology. So here is our project introduction. Next page. So our project was a re and rethinking of government school in Chennai. The present design of the school lacks in both sustainability and appearance 
and with the help of our project we aim to change that this can be achieved with the applications of modern elements in the re into the redesign which in turn will make the school perfect environment for knowledge transfer next page so here is our site study so in site study the temperature was hot and dry climate and rainfall was in seasonal rainfall and soil type was clay mud soil wind direction was in southeast direction so here in the 3d forms i showed that the orange area was an our site and the number one was an avin dairy milk product factory which was next to the site so it was affecting the school order smell and the school was laid on the omr highway road which was the most it park was laid in chennai so that was the another problem we are facing and the infosys which is high tech it park next to the our site so these are the so here we, we showed that a bashim apartment which is opposite our site so these are the things which is surrounded by our site next next slide so this was the preliminary analysis this was the actual school now was in uh, the actual school existing now so the school was located on the old mahabalipuram road solingnallur so it was located on the state highway so the site was surrounded by a population around 5 lakh here is the site the study of school the plan elevation sections are we gave here so in this plans you can see the schools are classrooms are arranged like a continuously so it was not without a good air circulation and all so usually it continues so actually the school has having a block main amenities and all so there is a three blocks main block amenities and lab block and admin block these three are the only uh, blocks which are available available in existing plan so next page so problems we are facing in the existing existing school so the problem first we are facing was pollution the school the pollution the school is located in the main road omr which will cause a lot of pollution to the building and the people the second problem was the why showing these pictures below here you can see the pictures we showed on the below so it was showing that we are trying to show the aesthetical value of the school in existing school and vegetation was uh, also not proper in the school so we are, we want to we are, we are just trying to re renovating the vegetation and all so the school lacks of playground sack building parking facility and service gate and the fifth problem was we are facing was air circulation by keeping classrooms too close each other the air circulation will not be proper so sixth one was that uh, as i said in the uh, site so there is a next to the our uh, site there was an avin milk dairy product factory so it was giving always orders more to the school so that was another problem we are facing so on the seventh problem we are facing was the pathway the pathway in the school was not proper so we will we will change that one also and the last one was uh, uh, pathways and the eighth one was the barrier free design so the school was not having the barrier free which was the uh, persons who will come from disabled person they need to have some uh, things so we are we are using that in our project also and the final one was that climate so chennai was hot, uh, usually a hot and dry climate so we are going to solve that one also design goal next page so our design goal was the main design goal of our project is to design ordinary school into an aesthetically sustainable place so while also uh, while also addressing issues that school surround the school also taken into account solve the problems in such the way fulfillment of children's needs while protecting the natural environment and the belief that this can maintained in perpetuity and sustainability this was our design goal so here is our design concept next page so our design concept was like using lot of modern elements like parametric column low e glass oblique roof barrier free design sustainability sustainability we are achieving through two more techniques like uh, uh, using grasses around the building and uh, rearrangement the building so parametric column was we are using this kind of parametric columns low e glass which was give, giving a sustainability to the building oblique roof was a little bit sliding roof so which was using in this, all the all the parts of this like all the blocks in the building so barrier free design which was and uh, the uh, ramps and all we are giving in the design next page so master plan here is our master plan the road was uh, there is one entry on the left side so from the entry uh, from the entry itself we can see the main parking on the right side you, we can see the two wheeler parking also so uh, we after we after the redesign main block lab lab and amenities admin block we provided a sack building also athletic tracks football ground basketball court so in the back back side we gave an gate two that was for service gate mr pratap singh is speaking on number two yes sir oh, okay i was got a little worried she said she yeah, good 
Yeah. Okay. I, I think everything going on well. Uh, next page. Next page. Next page. So here is the main building. So in main building, you just show the plans and all. So Back here you can, can see you uh, show by showing. Uh, sir. So here we are showing the main building plan. So uh, in in first we show the normal plans. This was the after redesigning plan. So in re redesign plan, there was you can see the spaces. So these spaces are due to rearrangements. So here you can see the col parametric columns also. So these are the plans uh, after redesigning. So uh, classrooms and main building. The main building there is only classrooms and vice principal room. That's all. And with the toilets attached. Next next page. So lab amenities. So lab and amenities place we, we just read how to say that uh, in we just rearrange the uh, buildings and all so uh, it was made into a two floors so in ground floors we can see the labs and all and in uh, up, upper wall floor you can see the rooms of uh, science lab classrooms and all so here you can see the rearrangement also and uh, i can explain the rearrangement policies after next page so this was the academic block plan with public roof and parametric column. Next page. And SAC student activity center, we provide in student activity center, we provide a men's room, pantry, and indoor games also with the oblique roof and the parametric column. Here we can we, we show that. Next page. So concept, our concept is like oblique roof. Oblique roof is a steeply pitched and appears to reach out the sky above it. So adds the height of the ceiling, increasing the size of the window, allowing more natural lights in stream into brightening up the rooms inside. So extended roof shelter shelters the outdoor entertaining area under it. It gives a household bold and strong character. Natural ventilation under top roof layer improve the thermal efficiency of this building. So this leads to optimal indoor temperature that provide much needed comfort during summer and winter. So if we are using oblique roofs in our design all over the admin blocks and everything so next page so another concept of sustainability so how are we giving sustainability so we just we just made an uh, design to create a structural element around the building which is having some amount of depth helps to maintain the plantation around the building so uh, the building was surrounded by plantation which helps the restrict outdoor small from dairy factory so uh, as i said from the there's a dairy factory desired to the school so we are just using the plants to restrict the smell so the plantation also gives a cool and fresh air. So it will helps to maintain the sustainability inside the building and, uh, and it will give uh, cold air during the summer also. Next page. So now the next, next one was rearrangement. So we are just uh, rearranging the classes already there. So the classes on the ground floor, it will go upward. So after we are changing those, so rearranging was happening due to, uh, after we rearranging the classes, so it will give a, airflow in the building. So it, it was more sustainable to the buildings and it will give a air circulations also. <clears throat> so in the left, I'm showing that void has been created over there due to rearrangement of classes. So it will help for ventilation. Here you can see the, uh, so here we, we can see the section of the principal's room, arts room, computer and slab room and extracurricular address. And by rearranging rooms, getting vacant spaces in the building, it will endure the movement of airflow throughout their structure and enabling the building into cooling while the summer also. Next page. So parametric column. This column is a modern element structure we used in our project. It provides a structural stable and provide great strength to the building. Instead of using two columns, we made into a single column. So it will also reduce the usage of materials. The just to finish it. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, next, next page, next page. So section. So in section, we are just showing the uh, in right left side. We are showing the sustainability we used on the building and rearrangement we placed on the building. And there you can see the glasses and uh, parametric columns in center recreationist area. And there is an uh, oblique roof used over there and in the classrooms. Staircase. So we we made a staircase of a contemporary staircase to. Uh, access the upper 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 floor building. Next page. So sustainable indoor air quality. So for indoor air quality, we are using carpets, paints, and adhesive that are non-toxic and chemically inert have been selected. Over 70% of active spaces or daylight, over 90% of active spaces have direct views to the landscape. So we have just carefully selected the wood, brick, concrete materials resulted in the building that are highly sustainable. Next page. 
So we just made a ran random analysis on our tool. What are the doors and windows we are using? So this was just a random table. Next page. So these are the design details we gave after the redesign. So ramps we gave, tactile and signs we gave on for barrier design. So student in student activity center we gave indoor games, pantry with a back entry so they they can uh, uh, get the products from the back gate itself. So in playgrounds we gave football playground, aesthetic athletics courts and basketball court and two wheeler parking vegetation water for every floors so main parking these are the public facilities we provided after the redesign next page so the problems we faced in the beginning like i said the pollutions has been minimized and the aesthetic of the school has been developed and the good vegetation has been improved in our design and the all basic amenities provided within the campus proper air circulations order coming from the outside it will also be restricted now it's so that the last page was set last that's all next that's all so there is a Thank you so much, team, uh, for a good presentation. So I would like uh, the zero to uh, have your questions, sir. Uh, if uh, nobody is going, could I could I go ahead? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, just one uh, quick thing. Uh, <clears throat> now <clears throat> you had you had started with an existing school, right? Yes, sir. And when you reimagined it, you were going to retain the structure, or were you actually going to reimagine the school from scratch? No, sir. We are just going to reconstruct the building which was existing, just uh, using the roofs and columns. That's all. Okay. So, which means that keep you're going to keep the the, the yes, shell, and then you're going to remodel or Relook at how the spatial organization is going to be, etc. Right? Exactly, exactly. Right. So actually, uh, to that extent, uh, it's it's again a nice choice for a building project because, like, I was talking initially about the need of architects to um, to go outside their comfort zone and take on projects which have a social responsibility. And uh, Sonali also uh, was talking about the same in her work in Charja Nabab. Uh, you know, it's it's great that you're doing this uh, you know, because we we've, we've also tried to reimagine spaces here in Malapur, which yes, is a heritage precinct in in Chennai. Yes, so to that extent, it's a great choice of project. Uh, however, a few things, um, and when we the the uh, idea of that laboratory building and how that space, can, uh, you know, at, at two levels, you're actually creating a nice connectivity through that step. You come up to the uh, to the terrace. Yes, I feel that on the classroom side, uh, perhaps a little bit more uh, thought could have been placed because you have taken that, you know, of course, we arranged it and, and, and tried to create some uh, open spaces, opened it up a bit, uh, repositioned some of the program, etc. But in the end, you know, you the one that's looking on to the green, uh, green space or the open space, you kind of have that, uh, that one glass. Uh, yes, Facade, literally, you know, yes, sir, yes, sir. and perhaps it is maybe the the design brief said that you have to use AIS, but you could still have thought about it a little bit more and not have just this plain glass facade because the 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 uh, the, the interest that you could create 
um, you know, within that uh, space itself could have been a lot, it could have been a lot more, there could be a lot more variety, a lot more depth rather than just having this. But I, the, okay. the, the effort put into the laboratory building, the spatial work there is, is, is great. Coming to the new buildings that you are actually planning on campus, yes, again, uh, the, trying to relate them uh, yes, to this kind of linear open space that you have, creating again some pockets of open spaces between buildings. So we trans, we we uh, transform residual and negative spaces into positive spaces between buildings. It's it's uh, it's a very difficult. Uh, exercise to do uh, is easy for me to say it, uh, but I, I know that it is very challenging. Uh, but I, I just would like you to be conscious about it uh, as you take on more and more such projects in in your in in your in the in the future. Sure, sure, sure. It, it, it's a good effort. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, sir, uh, from other viewers? Please. If there is no question, we can uh, proceed further. Uh, so uh, just one uh, point of clarification uh, that whenever we, we have given this uh, design brief, we have uh, given the complete uh, wings to open for them and not restricted to any specific company's product to be used. So yes, it's a good point what you have raised, uh, uh, Raghuram sir. But uh, yes, we have, we have not given any kind of uh, restriction in the uses of the product. Uh, Vasudevan sir, welcome back uh, uh, in, in the Olympiad. So I just uh, give you the update that we have done with uh, nine uh, presentations now and one presentation is left uh, before we will announce the winner. So now uh, we will uh, welcome our next uh, national jury, uh, Mr. Mahesh Sarumugam, a name which needs no introduction. He is considered to be an institute in himself in the field of facade engineering design and specification. Mr. Mahesh provides the strategic leadership as the director of Minhart India facade consultancy business. He has been in the facade industry for almost more than uh, 22 years now. His diverse background and leadership offers tremendous advantages in his position with Minhart facade. We are honored to have you uh, on board, sir. If you can uh, share a few words, thank you. Mahesh, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Good evening to all. is a is a nice event organized by AS and is a third edition. Is <clears throat> astonishingly sounding for the architecture students to uh, present and is an exposure for them to. Uh, they are improve their career post their education and graduations. See this facade architecture. I am specialist in the facade industry, so I would uh, bring to some awareness of the facade industry, uh, facade architecture and its industry. Uh, mainly, we are in India. We are a tropical environment. We know we are mainly doing with the uh, rectangular buildings and complex jumpings are not much in India as of date. There are few buildings and not much in India. We look at the West uh, in the early 90s and moves towards the East from Middle East to uh, Far East and Far East to China, the complex geometries are happening. Um, in, in India, mainly the rectangular traditional form and or a square or some kind of standard shapes and um, more, uh, more towards to limited and typical standard panels. And there are uh, standard repetitions, but in the global trend is changing. You know, today the trapezoidal geometries uh, of the facade and it is changing to warp geometries and it's changing to uh, simple geometries, but it's complex. Like, you know, even rectangular buildings, currently we are doing two projects in Mumbai. One is a uh, entire building of 83 square meter is a completely concave and convex on a rectangular building. The tower looks rectangular, but the facade become con concave and also every panel is a concave. 
and also we did um, one of the complex geometry in TCS with Siriseri with the Ratan Tata Customer Care Center project, Visionized project, which is tested for 9 KP. This kind of job projects we are capable to do. And in Colombo also, India did a good, marvelous job of the ITC Colombo and as well as the Adlier, you know, the two jo jo complex geometry they invested in come out. But in coming to Indian trend, you know, the investors are reluctant and cost conscious uh, of putting this investment and uh, compared to the Middle East and East Asia. Um, we need to convincing the owners and developers on the increased cost on creating this architecture is a tough time and challenging challenging and uh, is uh, because of the situation they also uh, try to move on this but at least some open eyelid to come in the industry to move on because look at the skyscraper cities of uh, middle east in dubai in 2000 onwards it is all the sex road is completely complex geometry and marvelous buildings same thing happened in 1990s in 89 to 95 2000 in singapore Malaysia started from 95, then China started 97, and today is China gone ahead of any other countries. And our neighbor, Colombo, you know, look at the gale face of Colombo, how they changed from after the war, 2009 to um, today. Even though the economically struggling recent COVID trend for the last three years, but the projects they've done in the gale phase was uh, amazing. Because you see, it's like a city. It will, but when comparing to the major metropolitan cities, except Mumbai and some buildings, we have a mess urban architecture in terms of uh, high rise, how urban planning and urban industry, everything, even industries in the center of the city, building tall tower is next to it, is completely a mess in India. It should be the future generation students should take it, uh, and then new generation architects should be looking into it and the new challenges to come to reform this all cities with skyscraper cities mainly the five major cities like Hyderabad is, is shaping but is shaping in a pocket locations and is not like a look what are you looking at the how the restructured in Hong Kong how restructured in Singapore in the 90s from Kampong the, the, the what called the slum areas change Bombay is doing uh, slum rehabilitation is good is happening. So this has to be happen in Chennai, Bangalore, and uh, the rehab to be done in uh, Calcutta and as well as major cities. Uh, the complex today, the trend is going. In our our students are lacking technology, as Vig, uh, Mr. Vig told in the earlier addressing. You know the complex geometries today. The parametric is a key. You know the technology of implementing and coding from uh, your Revit to other complex geometry softwares, uh, Rhino, Grasshopper, and integrating with Excel sheet, integrating with the engineering software like Stand7 or Stat Pro. This technology is not okay. In India, there are companies are doing it for foreign companies as outsourcing, but they are not able to facilitate because of the cost to the local projects. So these all need to be streamlined to take it to the architecture to international level especially the facade architecture that gives the sense of identity of the building and sense of identity of the locations. So I think the forum uh, will educate this thing, young talent to come to at least uh, technology hand in handy to get move forward this industry for future. Because I'm seeing in students in Singapore and US, Singapore Polytechnic or you go to Dubai or you've seen in Malaysia or in Hong Kong students, they are uh, well equipped and labs are well done and in India we are lacking this. I think this need to be addressed for a uh, future of uh, developing the career of our Indian architect, young architects. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your uh, words, encouraging words uh, and everyone will definitely learn. So now moving on, uh, we'll have our uh, last uh, presentation uh, for the day. Uh, from Om Dayal College of Engineering and Architecture. Uh, the participants are Anushka, Set, Anushka Mati, Chitra Lekha Saha, Swarupa Nandi, and Nilanjana Das. So if you can put your presentation team. 
Okay, I'm sharing the screen. You can you can start. Uh, it's better you put that on full screen mode. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. Good evening to all the jury members and my fellow mates. Um, we are a team from the East Zone uh, under the guidance of our professor, architect Shantanu Sen. We are a team of four members, Chitralekha Shah, Nilanjana Das, uh, Shaurupanandi and myself Anushka Maite. We are here to present our um, design, Architecture for Future. Here we have attempted to build up an architecture college as per the COA guidelines. Now our site is at Uti, which is in South India, we know. Now, our dream is to utilize the concept of the linear designing method and create an abstract cuboid building. Uh, we try to restrict our constructional method, very simple to achieve the cost-effective construction, but no compromisation with the essential facilities and the conservation of the ecosystem. Now, the site is located at uh, Southwick and uh, it's a, it has a direct communication with the uh, rail and road, which is very essential to attract the students here. And the area is 2.28 acres, uh, which is also according to the COA guidelines. And now, according to the site study, uh, during the site analysis, we have come to the conclusion that though this is situated on the slope of a hill, it is a stable land and the uh, chance of landslide is very less. It has a gradual slope of uh, 21 degree from south to north, and uh, it is just at, at a peripheral part of the residential area. Now the major wind flow direction is from uh, west to east and overall weather is comfortable for us. And so we, um, so we infer to make such a building where sunlight can be the natural illumination source and natural air circulation can maintain the uh, ambient temperature within the building. The developed campus comprises of academic admin block as main building supported with five independent hostels playground and parking zone. Security and isolation of the project is ensured by building a wall of stone masonry and wire fencing at a height of three meter and along the 425 meter long perimeter. The planning is so unique that the extended part of the upper floors are being supported on the natural slope of the hill and thus optimize the cost by reducing the height of the columns gradually and using the cantilever technology as principal practice. We also use the cut and fill method across a considerable area of the land, having a contoured land pattern. Using the proximity principle, we place the different hostels, keeping in mind the security factor. Girls hostels are always covered by another hostel or main academic building. We have attempted to build up a tunnel effect road through the buildings to reach at the parking space. Now we start with the detailed uh, constructed rooms of this project floor by floor. Let us first narrate the measurements of all basic units. Our floor height is 3.2 meters for all construction, except for the auditorium, which is at a height of seven meter. Lecture room and computer labs are 11 by 10 meters. Studio and workshops are 14.5 by 15 meters. Library is 13 by 31 meters. Examination, jury room and exhibition room are 22 by 14 meters. Common rooms are 10 by 22 meters. Reception area is 16 by 10 meters. Auditorium is 37 by 17 meters. Assistant professor's room is six by nine meter. Associate professor's room is seven by six meter. Professor's room and principal's cabin are seven by 6.5 meter. Canteen area is 17 by 18 meters. Toilet, which consists of six closets, six urinals and six basins for boys. And in case of girls, the urinals are replaced with additional basins are of 2.5 by nine meters. Staircase is five by three meters. Lift shaft is three by six meters. Stationary shop is 22 by 14 meters. Accounts and admin room are nine by 10 meters and security room is five by 6.5 meters. Now, our ground floor comprises of a security room, reception area, accounts and admin room, four lecture rooms and an assistant professor's room. Moving on to our first floor, it comprises of a library, 
a professor's room, a principal's cabin, associate professor's room, and four lecture rooms. The second floor of a college has two exhibition halls, a roof garden, and a space which has no breath for air ventilation since there is going to be a lot of footfall. The third floor has 12 labs, one stationary of associate professor's room. The fourth floor, which, is, which consists of 12 workshops and two associate professor's room, is only for the students. The fifth floor has two, four computer labs, two examination and jury halls. And sixth and the final floor has two common rooms, one auditorium and a canteen. Now here, each floors are connected through two lifts and a common staircase. To create an effective plumbing and sewerage system, the toilets are stacked through a single vertical axis. Next, next our single bedded hostels is a two bedded storage building with 10 rooms and attached baths in each floor. The ground floor is dedicated to boys and the first floor is for girls, which is elevated to 9.78 meter from road level and can accommodate 20 students maximum. Moving on is our double bedded hostels. Now these are two in numbers and two storey building. 10 rooms with attached bath in each floor is provided and one block is for boys, the other one is for girls. This is also elevated to eight meter from road level and can accommodate 30 students maximum. Next is a five bedded hostel. Now this is also a two, a two story building with two in number blocks, 10 rooms with attached bath in each floor. One is for boys and the other is dedicated to girls. Now this is also elevated to eight meter from road level and at a time can accommodate 60 students. Next, are our perspective views. The first is a north view, which shows concrete block, concrete partitions, and a boundary. The second, the second is our east view, which shows that the land beside our site is barren. The west view, which which is taken from a high level shows the beauty of a building. And the last but not the least is the South View. Now we have the staggered plan. Uh, uh, here by the staggered plan of all the uh, floors of the academic building aligned, um, aligned and the lift and the toilet blocks are along the same axis. Uh, the project has a provision for 40 students per, uh, per batch and uh, 15 uh, teaching staff and non-teaching staff and the FAR is 1.92. Now we approach to some selective ultimate finished interior views based on point of attraction. This is the auditorium stage with a total capacity of 420 people, 30 seats in each row with a total of 14 rows. Each row is elevated through 152 mm from the immediate front row. Optimized illumination has been used in this space. Floor, wall and entire ceiling is covered with wood and carpet. Wooden stage at a, is at a height of one meter from uh, floor level. The stage has three wings and two service balconies for lighting and sound control on each side. Sound absorbent materials are used to reduce the noise and echo. There are eight entry and exit gates with six stairs of three different heights. The lecture room, you just like the auditorium. The okay. Gallery style elevated seating arrangement is seen. Total capacity is of 40 students, 10 seats in each row, and there are four rows. Equipped with independent table having drawers and tools, this room has one large window with two doors arranged in opposite walls for air circulation and illumination by sufficient natural sunlight. White board and a green board are mounted on wall overlapping each other for display and writing activities. The floor is made up of tiles. The computer lab is the same as the lecture room, but uh, no elevated gallery for seating arrangement has been provided here. The exhibition room is one of the most attractive area in the college to make arrangement for displaying various works of the student. There are five different elevated dais at different heights for displaying the 3D crafts work. 
two independent concrete partial partitions having passed through openings for displaying 2D works, one S-shaped concrete partition having passed through openings for displaying different crafts work. Spotlights are used to highlight these dioceses and the floor is made up of marbles. With this, we come to the end of our presentation. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for completing on time. So uh, over to jury members uh, for the questions, please. Well, thank you for the presentation. Um, there are a couple of things I feel. Uh, number one, Uti is um, a hilly place. It has a certain kind of vegetation. It has a certain ambience. It has a certain environment. I just feel that this is... Um, a very urban kind of a school just plonked over there. You know, it is not, I feel, it is not sort of responding to the site at all. Uh, number two, your lecture halls, you see, it's an architecture school. In an architecture school, we have studios. Uh, we have interactive working. Uh, somehow these lecture halls are like any B-Tech university, you know. So I think... Uh, what an architecture school really requires, uh, the kind of environment it requires, I don't think that is being addressed over here. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, may I explain? Ma'am, uh, yes, yes. we provided we provided the gallery style seating, keeping in mind that sometimes we have a theory classes. And in those classes, sometimes students are not able to see the board clearly. Hence, that was the idea. Any more question, Zira? Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, had one uh, thought. See. Again, uh, since we are rethinking the uh, rethinking how an educational institution should perhaps be uh, looked at in the you know give, keeping a futuristic thought. Actually, if you look at how architecture education itself is changing, or even education itself is changing, there's a, an enormous amount of uh, technology, and then the uh, the softwares and the computers and and all of that coming into play, right? So I feel that the studio or the nature of the studio itself has to change. And what is it, what should the new studio look like? What should the new architecture studio look like? The other thing is that a lot of students uh, coming out today from architecture schools, they don't know, they are, they've forgotten how to make those physical models. And sometimes I tell you, if you make, if you make those physical models, it, it it just opens up your mind to a lot of things. So there has to be, even though we may be looking at the future, but there has to be certain uh, certain fundamentals of the architectural education should should always remain. Uh, the second thing is what I have seen in the uh, when 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 we were of course uh, you know in school, there used to be a lot of uh, the seniors, the juniors, all of that, there used to be a lot of, lot of close interaction. And I think that that potential should, you should be able to try, or you should try to re-engage uh, different batches through how, through how you design your spaces. The last is, of course, you know, the same thing, uh, what uh, Sunali Ma said is about the site and how we, your uh, design should respond a lot to the site. Perhaps the auditorium itself could have taken advantage of the of the slope many different things right so please do think about all those these aspects uh, especially since the what you are looking at is the future of the educational institution so that's for uh, so may i yeah, add yeah. one more thing please, please please so you said you said that we could have used uh, the slope so we have actually used it uh, a part of a building is actually a cantilever which takes support uh, in the back end hill. So, so uh, that can also be a second point of exit during an emergency. So keeping in mind that part, we have actually used it. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
no but yeah you are not understanding when i say use it i mean we're not just looking at elevating it and creating an exit from there right i would like to use it as part of the yes sir design itself yes sir incorporating yeah so it yes sir fundamentally uh, um, it should be fundamentally a part of the whole design right that's yes, what sir. i mean so thank you may sir. I ask, uh, which uh, which year of architecture are you in mm, sir third year currently okay so for third year it is okay but then you'll have to uh, pick up a lot in next two years you know uh, sure sir we are looking at it for third year architects uh, presentation uh, but there is lot of scope for improvement in the thought process in the presentation itself you know yes sir yes scope of uh, improvement okay that's it yeah but thank yeah, you sir nice. i mean the fact that again saying that at a third year level you are willing to uh, put effort to participate and do this i think it, it's 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 commendable and i would like to encourage you to do more right yes yeah. thank you sir thank you so much thank you zeros i'm sure that uh, team will learn a lot with your input and with this presentation we have concluded all the 10 presentations uh, for the day and yes it was a very nice session and uh, we had a very good interaction uh, now without any further delay i would like to invite uh, our chief guest for today i would like to take this opportunity to welcome our distinguished chief guest mr vasudevan suresh is the national chairman for igbc indian green building council he is also the chairman of igbc policy and advocacy policy And, and the committee and he is working very closely with the good Ur urban uh, governance initiatives for the meeting of challenge in the urbanization and making smart green and vibrant city through work of municipalitka uh, with astonishing 54 years of professional experience in the housing infrastructure rural and uh, urban development real estate development and uh, building environment sector uh, leading to sustainable uh, development he is a strong advocate uh, for sustainable development and the green building movement he has received 16 awards and recognition and to cap it with the cidc industry doyen award in 2011 and ibc lifetime achievement award in 2014 i have got the privilege of sharing stage with him in few occasions during uh, different sem seminars on sustainability and i must say that i have i have learned a lot with his knowledge and i'm sure that all present here today will also get benefited with his thoughts we are highly obliged and feel privileged to have you with us sir today so without further delay we welcome uh, mr v suresh to say a few words over to you sir uh thank you very much sanjay ji vanjan ji and all the distinguished panelists uh, uh, what a tough job you must be having as jurors to go through each of the presentations so wonderfully done i couldn't have the pleasure of going through all the things i was there till 130 joined only around 440 you see the last three presentations there and but what what is good is since it is all shared uh, uh, shared on the uh, uh, on my mobile mobile system on the i could go through each of the presentation over there about some of them were 25 30 38 uh, slides presentation two from each of the zones about 10 presentations which came over there i could just get a a flash view of uh, some of the presentation i was actually looking forward to hear what for the jurors how they felt about the um, uh, about the various presentation and the award then i thought i'll talk but then you wanted me to talk earlier uh, it's fine not an issue uh, it'll be better to hear from the jurors their own considered view on how they have felt about the strengths of each of the project first of all i want to congratulate all the 10 uh, um, entries and the uh, contribution for the young architects uh, Uh, from uh, the various uh, zones who have come with brilliant ideas over there and uh, uh, we ourselves organize in the igbc the design ideas competition every year where about roughly 200 architecture schools uh, uh, compete uh, and uh, i'm aware of the uh, part of the green bill uh, green uh, 
building Congress. We give the awards for them. But I'm happy that uh, Asahi, uh, Asahi has given a major initiative by getting the young ones to get the best possible ideas on that. And uh, I'll also give a reasonably flexible uh, opportunity for them to come with the best possible uh, suggestion uh, and imagine a good project where all sustainable development in, uh, inputs can be put on in a very large way. And uh, in a substantial large way, many of the particular projects have really uh, taken those uh, aspects of design in a good way, not only the issues related to the passive design, the geographic location, the location of the sun, the solar path studies and related one, how do you really design the building in such a way that the least amount of heat gain from the energy performance index is coming in the right way? How do you deal with the uh, 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 right level of inputs for energy saving as well as water saving and various other features which are uh, sustainable development features are extremely good. Somehow you have got into building materials in a large way in terms of the technology because that's going to be also an important component because the embodied energy of building materials is going to play a very important role, even though all these years we've all been concentrating more on the uh, operational energy and energy saving coming in the buildings through various uses. How can we say through passive design as well as through other equipments on air conditioning or uh, lighting or heating or various other things to bring down the uh, energy saving in a large way. But this is going to be in the climate change agenda, going to the decarbonized agenda, which is going to be the one going the next 10, 20 years time. They're going to get into the each building material, how much embodied energy they are using. Uh, if steel is going to take more energy, glass is going to take more energy, concrete, and how do you bring down the embodied energy building material also? So the decarbonizing agenda has to take into account the carbon footprint reduction in a large way. Uh, one, one, one project has really got in a little way, the U value and the R value to be utilized for those particular building middle is one way of looking at it to the extent of heat reduction to come into the building over there and therefore to that extent make it energy efficient, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but I was very happy to see at least in four of the projects, uh, uh, as I said, when I saw so for the project, it is just opening up the particular slide and taking around 10, 15, 10, maybe 10 minutes for each of the project to go through what are the salient features they have incorporated in that uh, one? And there are a lot of merits there. I want to congratulate uh, the, the young talenting, the blooming young architects. Uh, uh, There's a guy, a right way to get involved in that. But I think some of the things I thought I'll briefly tell are the issues which request we done for the, um, what we look for in our own projects when we, uh, when we uh, raid buildings for the, uh, uh, green building for sustainable development point of view, the use of land in the right way, and also utilizing the uh, 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 the building design to be in line with the overall uh, uh, environmental location, be it in, in terms of the uh, harnessing all the natural resources, be it on water or be it on uh, 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 be it on uh, solar energy to be harnessed. I couldn't get so much of information on that aspect in this particular area. So we identify those things in respect of not only the use of the design of the building, passive design of the building and use of the materials in terms of the, uh, the building functional ability and how best you can do that and using the space in the best possible way and bring in uh, energy efficiency, water efficiency, waste management efficiency, carbon footprint reduction uh, in, a, in a very big way. And most importantly, how do you green the environment? The heat island effect is an important component. How do you bring down the heat island effect with the right level of landscaping and use of spaces in the good way, water bodies to be created in an appropriate manner? Uh, I found uh, the jurors have rightly asked some of the important questions uh, in, uh, in those areas. Uh, some have done it well, and uh, some have, uh, in all the projects, have not done all of them together. But then I think, by and large, a major effort has been coming from the various uh, uh, competing uh, teams to bring out those aspects in a very large way. And I think uh, what's going to happen is uh, the nature of designs that is going to see the, see the best possible acceptance over a period of time is going to be those which has got the best possible sustainable development features as, as a building and as a complex a series of building and including a complex that can come over there, the built environment will come, how 
that's going to be in uh, tune, uh, in symphony with nature, using all the natural elements of uh, air, uh, um, lighting, and the solar, and the water, and the green effect, and the use of land, and all the Panchabudas, how best to utilize is what at the end of the day is going to be uh, the uh, one going to win, uh, win in these uh, areas. And uh, we ourselves have got, uh, got about 320 IGBC student chapters in various architecture schools and engineering colleges, where these chapters are doing extremely well in the sense that uh, we bring in uh, right at the uh, third year and fourth year and the final year, all these green building components and the sustainable development issues you brought as part of the curriculum, even though as such, it may not be there that we are already in touch with the Council of Architecture, uh, and the IAA to see how best into the curriculum we can bring these elements as part of the design issue. As such, design issue itself, as Raghu has said, maybe 20 years back, 30 years back, some of those elements to do in symphony of nature is already there. Therefore, we are only really trying to identify some of those issues which can be quantified and try to give that particular thing and give some weightages for each of that and not the building looking nice alone, but building also to the good quality of life we brought into it where the be the good daylight that we are able to harness well, get in the light and not the heat and the glare, and also get the right little ventilation. I saw one or two one already natural drop coming into the particular one. I myself are living in one of the lost Swansong homes built by Laurie Baker, the famous uh, architect uh, uh, who has really got not only cost-effective technologies she brought into the uh, into the particular building and using all those natural elements to be in a very large way, especially in terms of the natural drop that can be done for the air changes to be brought into the particular spaces and not necessarily always depending upon uh, mechanical ventilation or the air conditioning and related work. One, uh, uh, But where we need that, we had used that also. So what I'm trying to, I was looking for some of those elements and uh, we, we are working with these particular architecture schools and engineering colleges uh, through not only through the Council of Architects for the Architecture course, and also with the All India Council of Technical Education for the engineering colleges for the engineering syllabus also to be brought in uh, in a big way. And uh, another important thing I could find, I'm a, I'm a civil engineer with the from the College of Engineering, uh, uh, the oldest college in the country, about 228 years old. Uh, uh, that's from where I come from. And we have been trying to get, that's where we also have architecture school nearby. Yeah, a combined effort between architecture and engineering is also a major area we have to work on. And large number of things of sustainable development is a combination of not only the three-dimensional spaces being created and also using building technologies and the uh, civil engineering aspect also to work along with that. And now we got the other dimension coming or the MEPF, namely mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting and the safety and security equally important. And without them, the buildings are no good. They're all just walls and roofs being there and floors being there. But what really brings life to is the water, the sanitation, and uh, all the other things which will make it functional in a large way. And therefore, you've got to link and coordinate with the uh, mechanical, electrical plumbing and uh, uh, firefighting and the safety team over there. I was looking for some elements whether uh, some people have included some of those features over there. One, one entry has touched a little on that. So therefore equally important, namely the architecture, the civil engineering, as well as all the services team, all put together is, is a, is a uh, unique creation as a, with the multidisciplinary approach that will be coming over there. And it will be good to really see coordination, integration with all that. And Raghu already said, the modern way of teaching also means the not the way it was done 30, 40 years back. You have substantial amount of BIM modeling coming uh, uh, in the design stages during the uh, construction stages and completion, including post-operation uh, uh, with BMS issues coming. So large number of new tools are also coming to the particular one. And I was uh, looking forward to, forward to some of them coming. I found two other projects they already uh, covered the uh, need for integrated approach and a coordinated approach coming on that. Uh, but I would personally believe, and I'm also glad, happy that uh, uh, since the Asahi has taken the lead, even though in all fairness to Asahi, they are not told anything about the glass assets, but then many people have identified how you can also have good amount of design elements being brought in by using, bringing the uh, natural light in a very large way. And uh, as you know, the glazing and related component has already found a wonderful place in the National Building Code. No, no other courts have got that. 
the part six structural design section eight is called the glazing requirement for building for the first time it has come in over there and the part four of the building code has brought in even when you use glass as an envelope or glass as a um, as a whole uh, um, coverage or with with masonry walls and other related area how the issues related to fire safety becomes an important component, the type of openings that is to provide a smoke to come out, et cetera, provisions are there. So therefore, glass as a material being used in, a, in buildings in a very large way, in office complexes, in uh, malls, in commercial complexes, hospitals, hotels, et cetera, et cetera. All those design features have come not only in, uh, as I said, in the part six on structural design, uh, eight, as well as in fire safety component, plus also in the building services component, very nicely brought out in part, in part eight building service, all the six section. I was seeing that how much amount of exposure the young teams must have got. Uh, maybe I could see in one of the particular presentation, uh, that streak or a streak, I can use the word, already coming. It's good, it's very good. I mean, but I think uh, I would put my own assessment based on all the 10 projects would have come, I would, I would give a, a wonderful seven to eight uh, out of 10 rating for all this. Some of them get into uh, nine, maybe one or two of them might slip down to about six or something like that, maybe there. But I think that's the type of impression I got. It's a great effort uh, by each one of uh, the team uh, which is brought in over there. Uh, the very fact that at this young age, they are able to bring in so much of brilliant ideas on a live project which they themselves have conceptualized is a, is a, is a great thing. So my Congratulations to not only the team members, but also all those who guided them to deal with this particular projects uh, over there. And uh, maybe if, if each would have had only about 10 to 15 slides, I would have seen all of them in minute detail, but some of them going to 38, some of them going to 34, some of them going to 32. So I could not spend so much time on that. Maybe because they do good justice to each of them, but you jurors, uh, I've got the lucky opportunity to see right from 135 to nearly uh, 530, namely about nearly four hours. You people had the time to deal with the uh, 10 projects. I'm sure I'm, I'm looking forward to hear from each of your distinguished uh, uh, jury members on how they themselves felt about each of the project over there. But then uh, uh, Shailesh caught me earlier than hearing from you. Then I reacted to that also. So all I want to do is my best congratulations to each of them. To get each one of you should become a, um, a sustainability specialist. And that's an important component because I just thought two more uh, ideas I want to convey is I talked of so many aspects of NBC. NBC 2016 is an important document for the whole country because it's the first time anywhere in the world, using that anywhere in the world, after sustainable development goal to the year 2030 has been brought out and which was done in September 2015, National Building Code 2016 version has got an exclusive chapter on approach to sustainability. And that's an important chapter. Part 11 of the National Building Code is a very, very important chapter. And I'm sure most of the uh, 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 students from uh, the team must be already exposed to it. I would uh, advise them to go through that particular thing a little more in detail. And then also, uh, a new part, uh, another new part which has come is the part 12, which is also called assets and facility management. Building, buildings, building, building a building is not an easy, uh, it's not a tough job. But afterwards, what, how does it perform? Performance of buildings during operation stage, how does it perform as a residence? How does it perform as a school? How does it perform as a hospital, patients and doctors? How does it perform as an office or a mall? Therefore, imagining various activities to come over there. If you're able to see that, how will this particular building perform uh, after the whole thing is completed, occupied by various users for different users, and will it do well? I think one, this question has been asked by uh, two jurors during the, uh, pres uh, after the presentation over, feeling that it may not succeed, you know, very rightly identified. And it's a very right observation, I thought. So therefore, that assets and facility management part 12 is an equally important component. And information communication technology is a very major component that all our buildings, the two years of uh, uh, Corona virus and the pandemic has shown over there, work from home has been the thing. Even the education is from the residents, everything. So electronically, 
all those particular buildings and uh, everything has got to link with that. So you're going to have a new information highway coming in all the buildings. So a new chapter called information communication technology is an important component. I was looking forward to that. At least one of them would talk about that, that aspect in any of the projects over there. Uh, uh, sadly, that is missed out. So equally important. So if very right in the beginning, they got to be that has got to be uh, taught thought out. Whether it's being the optical fiber being put over there, or what communication system in the building is going to be there, and what type of uh, um, uh, things would be needed in buildings in terms of all the uh, installations, uh, uh, be it the uh, electrical or the electronic or the various other installations required, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I just thought I'll make a brief mention about some of these areas, but uh, uh, closing, uh, I would like to, because I have been associated with the building code right from the first version of 70, 83, 2005 and 2016 version. I'm aware therefore where our codes stand, our codes are excellent documents available uh, on today's requirement and sustainable development is a very major area. We have only eight more years to go for 2030. 2015 started over there, all the 17 goals of SDG, you got about roughly out of 17 goals there, at least seven goals are very important for every architect, uh, architectural and engineering students to understand, and they got to incorporate those particular goals as part of that. I was looking for a, a mention on SDG and how they have tried to cover in some other project. Maybe they were, they were not directly meant it, but I think Two projects really covered some of those areas. I mean, I have to give credit for that particular thing. Uh, well, I shouldn't talk more, uh, Shailesh. I already tried to give a, a broad understanding. Uh, it's an extempore, uh, uh, speaking from the heart, what I thought about the whole uh, event. Uh, as I said, I would have done it maybe a little more differently had I heard from each of the jurors and their own impressions about how the projects were and uh, what, their, what their strengths and uh, what uh, where those, I, like I said, there's some area they can improve upon. You know, that there's a right level of suggestion coming over there. But all the same, once again, congratulations to Asahi for the initiative taken for organizing a wonderful exhibition to all the competitors uh, for the 10 teams from the zones coming with the best possible inputs, with whatever their own understanding, whatever their appreciation of the whole uh, subject on built environment, they try to put it across. Some have done phenomenally well, some have done reasonably well, some other not then as good, as I said, it ranges from a six to nine scale on that from my side. I set it on average about seven to eight. Uh, and of course, to all jurors for the patient time that you have uh, given to hear them very well, give those people all the time to uh, make their presentation and your own uh, views to be added in this particular one. And that's uh, a very happy augury to deal with the, uh, an event of like this as it is an Olympiad. <laughs> and therefore, at the end of it, there are only few winners and becoming like, for example, the Australian girl today got the, oh, uh, she has won that in Melbourne. Only one can win, even though many might compete on that. So I'm sure the winners also will be few in number. Others should not feel bad, but very the very fact that you competed in an event of this nature, itself is a great, great step forward. I'm sure that puts an enormous amount of, uh, 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 what can I say, confidence level, understanding level, on the whole built environment, how do you really deal with that? When you step into maybe next one or two years, when I graduate and start getting into practice in a big way, I'm sure this will all stand in good stead. And therefore, once again, um, to uh, uh, to them, my best wishes. Uh, I would like to stop at this point of time and I'm eagerly looking forward to hear from the jurors and also to see who has finally won it. I got one or two guesses, this might get the award. Let me see. I'll tell at the end whether my guess was right. I'll be very honest. I written on a small sheet of paper what the names are for the 10, which should get. Let me see from the jurors what the selection is. And uh, once again, all my very, very best wishes to each one of you and Vikramji for, for calling us over there and spending some good time. Um, I thank you for uh, inviting us and to be there. Uh, over there. And also to Kiran uh, for uh, keeping me continuously being brought into the program. Thank you. I'll stop Thank at this point of time. Yeah. Great to hear Thanks. you, sir. Great. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your kind words. And I'm, I think that everyone has already got their worth of time spent today from your thoughts, what you have just shared. And, and yes, you rightly mentioned that the journey is more important than the destiny, destination. So yes, whoever wins doesn't matter, but uh, this event objective is met. So now, uh, sir, we actually have all the 
presentations from our Azure embedded along with the presentation, which is already completed. Yes. Uh, uh, presentation. So now we have uh, the breakout session. After that, we will have uh, our keynote speaker, Mr. Jatin Shah will speak. So we will have the link uh, appearing here. So uh, people has to go into that uh, breakout session uh, to score the teams. And then we'll come back and we'll have uh, our keynote speaker. And then after that, uh, we'll announce the winners. Okay. So hold on, we'll have a break now for some time? Uh, it, it's not a break. It, it will be a five minutes breakout session where uh, all the Zurer will uh, go into some different room and we'll share. Uh, They'll have to interact with themselves with yeah. their own notes. Each must have given the points on various parameters, correct? So... Uh, so do, we, do we continue to stay here, Shailesh? Yes, sir. We will continue to stay here, right? Yeah. Only Judas breakout. Okay. Yeah. But we can continue to uh, talk, no? Do we... Uh, you can uh, silence here. Uh, yes. How do we go into the break room? There, nothing has come up. Uh, Mac and team, please send a pop-up message. So yeah, you will see the pop-up message. Welcome to the world of AIS Windows. We offer a comprehensive product range in UPVC and aluminium windows and doors. They are also available in a range of customizable options. AIS windows are designed with an engineered precision and can be used for both residential and commercial spaces. AIS windows not only provides best-in-class products, it also enriches lifestyle through enhanced aesthetics along with offering varied solutions in acoustic comfort, privacy, safety and security as well as energy savings. The AIS Experience Center is a first-of-its-kind experience center in glass and windows industry. A unique place where you not only get to see but also feel and experience the solutions in glass, window and door systems. A visit to this center helps you to make an informed decision for your space, be it residential or commercial. Center is empowered with cutting-edge digital technology to aid easy understanding of our products and solutions with the personalized experience. A 3D holographic video in the brand chat room engrosses one into the world of AIS glass and window solutions. The design studio opens up experiential possibilities through the latest technology via augmented reality and virtual reality experience. Our AR app is one of its kind augmented reality experience in the fenestration industry. This unique app makes it easier for you to select the right doors and windows by allowing you to visualize the placement of our products in your space. An interactive design screen allows one to digitally visualize the different solutions Glass offers and varied window types in UPVC and aluminium along with available accessories. Let's have a look at and understand more about the solutions that our products offer. Our mission is to transcend the norms and achieve excellence with all our glass products and solutions. Our entire manufacturing process is streamlined calibrated and perfected to the highest standards of quality. AIS Clear is a high quality clear glass that is characterized by high precision flatness and uniform thickness, ensuring perfect clarity of vision and a brilliant luster. It is available in variety of thicknesses and sizes. AIS tinted heat absorbing glass absorbs 30 to 45 percent of the sun's heat enabling greater comfort and enhanced aesthetics it is available in a variety of colors sizes and thicknesses AIS crystal 
is India's only branded frosted glass. It obscures the view while allowing light to pass through, making it ideal for privacy and aesthetic appeal. AIS Opal is India's leading energy efficient and heat reflective glass brand. It is available in a range of vibrant colors. AIS Opal's solar control properties make it the best choice for exterior glass and also for various aesthetic applications. Long last Right from when you wake up in the morning to the time you hit the bed again, AIS glass is present everywhere. Enabling you to soak in only what's good, keeping all the negatives out. Let us show you how. Our solar windshields for your car have been designed keeping you in mind. With effective UV protection and innovative head-up display providing dashboard information, we make every drive a peaceful, safe and comfortable experience. And if you decide to take the metro or the bus, you'll see our glass there as well. From personal to office spaces, our energy-efficient glass solutions restrict solar heat while allowing natural light to come in to help you cut down on your lighting and air conditioning consumption. Now isn't that doing your bit for a healthier planet? Whether it's a top secret meeting or an open discussion, we help you do both with the flip of a switch. We call it AIS Switch Glass, a solution that gives you privacy or transparency whenever you want it. And we know how much time you spend at your workplace so leave it to our aesthetic glass solutions to make for a more productive and positive work environment. And when you want to unwind, the extraordinary shades of our decor range ensure every space is full of life and every experience is memorable. After a long day, we ensure that coming back home is a great feeling, a place of comfort, happiness and protection where you truly feel at ease. And at the end of the day, we also ensure your time is only yours as our acoustic windows cut out all the noise from outside to ensure that you get the rest you deserve. For tomorrow is another day and we'll meet again. AIS Experience Centre is empowered with cutting-edge digital technology to aid easy understanding of our products and solutions with a personalised experience. A 3D holographic video in the brand chat room engrosses one into the world of AIS glass.
growth and uh, developing long term and short term strategies for the business to remain profitable creating a lot of sops the training manuals uh, for uh, as well as to ensure a culture of client satisfaction and expanding the client base to accelerate success he is also a member of uh, indian institute of architect member of royal institution of chartered Sur chartered surveyors rics as well as he is active member and co chair of project management group apart from that he is also a regular invitee as a panel discussion on a different industry event and as a guest lecturer in the architecture and planning colleges in india so we are glad to have you sir as our keynote speaker for today and i am sure that we will learn a lot uh, by listening to you over to you sir thank you thank you salesh thank you good evening to all the jury members chief guest mr suresh sir participating students and the ai's organizing team what a wonderful event this is i thank you for inviting me to be part of this event and it's been a real pleasure to sit through all the presentations and not some i i ran through all the 10 presentations with the jurors and what a wonderful summary which suresh sir did i mean uh, just going through the slides and he summarized all the points and brought out all the key issues uh, it's it's wonderful to hear from suresh sir with such enthusiasm he has it has been not just a learning great experience for me but i would say for every one of us who has been part of this uh, session it has been highly encouraging also and thought provoking uh, it's it's great to see young minds stretching their limits and putting together the thoughts which are well discussed well deliberated and which relate to the future chief guest suresh sir and eminent jury members have echoed the same during the speeches indeed the future is in really a good hands and very bright hands i congratulate to all the students mostly there are from third year architecture and what a kind of uh, piece of presentations they have put across glad that i am not the architect because when i was practicing architecture I never used to do this kind of things irrespective of whatever you lose today or whether you win today this platform is a showcase of your talents of your thought processes kudos to all of you in its third year this ais platform has just become larger for students it is important to be, to use such platforms like this and where the best of the minds best of the architects of this country and consultants are not only reviewing uh, the submissions but also mentoring the, all of you it has been highly motivating and i am saying i i am sure it must be very highly encouraging for most of you to to learn from the comments which you got during the sessions i also would like to congratulate the jury members both at regional levels and at national levels for doing a selfless job by taking your time out of your busy schedules architecture as a field needs no uh, introduction to me it is provoking to activate new thinking and being an architect myself i know how difficult it is to remain up to date to today's ever changing environment um someone very famously said and um, i just want to put up a line that i do not work for the clients i work with them this was a profound statement of an architect which i had you know uh, during my college days made me to also think about it so he spoke a lot about sustainability a lot a lot about nbc 2016 having a green chapter igbc doing a wonderful work but just a thought provoking ideas here all of you must have heard about a68a a68a A68 a is was a large piece of iceberg one fourth of the size of belgium as a country which broke off in 2017 scientists thought that it will take a decade to melt but it just melted in 4 years a 152 billion liters of fresh water was laid last january you you can see the how the world is changing and we all need to make it better the sustainability and technology the environmental issues uh coupled with economic scenarios the ever changing expectations of the consumers are something which are important ai and technology are all contributing factors and we as cultural producers as architects i we i call them as cultural producers will have to collectively drive this landscape the world economic forum yesterday announced a report wherein it has been clearly spelled out that construction and operation of the building contribute 38% of global emission 
that's just a point which paul also was trying to make it during his speech apart from burning the midnight oils uh, and i did it a lot while gossiping and going around in my hostel rooms but all of you have done excellent job um, making such nice presentations uh, it is it is sure that all of you have certain expectations and you will surely create some iconic structures moving forward coming to me being someone responsible for design management and now due diligence i have a piece of advice for all of all of the students and all the participants here who have not who are also students here i am sure uh, suresh sir and jury members will also agree to this point as you embark on creating some of the beautiful designs in today's challenging environment it is also important to keep an eye on buildability including working with models which ragu also mentioned very clearly in his lecture on the cost some of you brought out the cost aspect profitability because and what vivek mentioned about having a right attitude maybe not of alu arjun in pushpa but still a right attitude to create a good working environment many times as a project management consultant i have personally seen designs not coming to the light of the day just because they were not economically thought about they were not thought about how it will be built uh, the knowledge to change or to challenge are there we need to tie up with our engineering friends and we used to do a lot during our college days on why it cannot be built in a way or why it cannot can be done in a particular manner that working knowledge will actually make a big difference uh in challenging our our own engineers friends um uh, we live in a country where there's no dearth of ideas and inspirations a uh, optimum balance on ideas inspiration buildability and cost has to be stuck um uh, this is what will make you successful and like what are all the jury members are here they have been very successful in all the endeavors and all the projects which they have taken up sonali ma'am also mentioned about a continuous learning and this forums have to be taken as continuous learning and takeaways have to be imbibed in our uh, next projects uh, which we enter into such kind of forums with uh, i do remember a project where uh, in initial days an architect wanted to design a slanted column and what it turned out eventually was very different so at at the right stage if you have uh the, the 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 knowledge about this engineering the structure the cost the buildability aspect believe me what you will design will eventually will be built by us as project managers in conclusion uh without taking much of the time uh i think this platform has been uh great for the students and that has led very practicality to the academics also as i mentioned before one should not be disappointed if their team loses suresh sir also echoed rather they should be happy that they were part of this forum and they learned a lot from best of the minds and their knowledge their working sessions are going to be utilized for next seven uh, next five years all brought out this point very clearly hello am i audible yeah so i i think uh, every one of us now waiting for the winners to be announced soon and i will again like to like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the winners in advance in i should actually congratulate all the 10 participants participation the teams which participated in this session today you all of you have put in a lot of hard work and all all your mentors uh, have guided you pretty well uh, thanks ais team for making this event very possible and making it a grand success a huge amount of hard work has gone by the back end team by the management team of ais to bring it to the third level third year of glory and congratulations to all and each one of you thank you thank you ais members for this great platform and inviting me to be part of this forum i wanted to keep it short in the interest of time thank you so much yeah thank you so much sir thank you for the kind words and uh, thank you for bringing out uh, too many important aspects at the global level as well as at the micro level it's uh, really uh, a lot of learning which uh, people will take away so without uh, 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 making them wait more for announcing the winner garima i would like uh, you to take from here to announce the winner along with uh, 
the, the jury members oh. and the uh, chief guest and the keynote speakers. So, Garima, over. Thank you, sir. And thank you to all the teams who put forward a great show today. And uh, our jury had a hard time finalizing the winners because all of you all were so good. I, I would now request uh, architect Vivek Bole to please announce the second runner ups for the competition. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Janima. So, the second runner up position is a tie up, uh, and the tie is between. Uh, Two groups, Group Three, Sir JJ Group of uh, JJ College of Architecture, Vaishnavi and team. Many and congratulations! Congratulations, team! Congratulations! Thank you, sir. And you, sir. Uh, their uh, their partners, Group Eight, that is Mark Institute of Design and Architecture, Grace and team. Both the teams are second runner-up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to both the teams. Uh, we would now like to present you with your certificate of merits, your checks, your of the prize money, and trophy. Many congratulations to both the teams. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, I would like to request uh, Mr. Jatin to please announce our first runner up for the competition. Thank you, Garima. Thank you for inviting me to announce this. Uh, with bated breath, I think all of you must be uh, eager to learn uh, to understand this. So, yeah, the winners are for this, for this category are uh, School of Architecture, IPS Academy, Manali Ramchandrani, Tikshant. Harshita and Pushpendra. Congratulations to all, all four of you. Thank you so much, sir. Congratulations, congratulations team. team. Mr. You can see your certificate of merit. You check for your cash price and your trophy. And now, I would request Mr. Suresh to please announce the winner for the competition this year. Uh, so, Garima, I think uh, Mr. Suresh has a network uh, issue. His bandwidth okay. is low and therefore he's, uh, you know, he's dropped off. So, uh, Raghuram sir, may I request you to do the honors, please? We'll do, we'll do. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, many, many congratulations to all of the participants, uh, very phenomenal hard work and commitment uh, as much as anything else. Really, you know, in, in along with your academic schedule uh, to participate in this is definitely very, very, uh, you know, commendable. And uh, we encourage you to do, uh, continue to participate in these uh, competitions because it's a great learning experience. Uh, I have great uh, pleasure in uh, announcing the winner of this uh, Olympiad uh, from uh, the Dr. Banuben Nanavati College of Architecture, Anuja, Rajendra, and Kale. Congratulations, team, and uh, wish you all. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request uh, Mr. Sony uh, to please announce the quiz winner for today. The pop-up yeah. quiz we had. Right. Okay. So I take this opportunity to announce the quiz winners. We have two winners, Pushpendra Patel and Abhishek Trivadi. Congratulations to you, and your gifts will reach you soon. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So you may now present the vote of thanks. So on behalf of. Uh, AS team, I would like to congratulate the winners of Design Olympiad 2002. Not only the winners, but we would like to congratulate and applaud each of the participating team for the great work done and reaching at this level. It has been a pleasure viewing some of the innovative ideas and projects. Through learning and feedback imparted by the jury architects, I believe all the participants will take back a lot of knowledge that is useful in their practical field of study. I would especially like to appreciate and thank 
our respected juries, architect Vivek Bole, architect Sonali Bhagavati, Mr. Mahesh Arumugam, Mr. Paul Moses, architect Kalwadia, and architect Rekhram, as well as our chief guest, Mr. V. Suresh, and keynote speaker, Mr. Jadin Shah, for being part of this ADO journey, mentoring budding architects under ADO 2021, and investing their precious time to be here today and get the projects showcased. The guidance, your feedback on the project, and the extensive ADO master classes conducted in order to educate students, I am sure it will prove to be extremely helpful for the students. With this, I sincerely appreciate the entire regional jury panel for taking time out from their busy schedule to provide detailed suggestions and individual guidance to each of, each of the team members. Learning from your sessions will definitely enhance the students' capability of th uh, thinking in their respective careers. I would like to extend my extreme and uh, 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 thanks to the respected principals and faculty members and the other members from the audience who have been a part of this entire event. Thank you and see you next year. Thank you.